northern two thirds of Perry County under a severe thunderstorm warning until 645 central time 745 eastern time. Uh, this severe thunderstorm warning, this big one right here that we just talked about uh, also has a tag, some extra information on that severe thunderstorm warning that says a tornado is possible. So that's why we're on here with you. And also it looks like this line is not weakening, so it's not going to take a whole long time uh, to get into and possibly impact more of our viewing area. So uh, right now those storms are lining up about 60, 70 miles just out to the west of Louisville. So moving east at about 50, it's going to be moving into the metro Louisville area in just over an hour. So it looks like uh, extra heads up just after 8 o'clock this morning eastern time in metro Louisville as that continues to move to the east. And uh, now areas a little farther to the north, say about right there, say Highway 56 north. They, this area is much more stable and cool. Uh, so the severe weather threat is going to be less as you go farther north into southern Indiana. In fact, Sam, our storm team meteorologist Sam Gabrielli is here to show us the watches and the warnings. We'll start with the watches because we have a brand new tornado watch that covers a large portion of our viewing area. But again, uh, just the southern tier counties of southern Indiana, basically along the Ohio River, Metro Louisville, and then most of our Kentucky communities in the viewing area it does not include right now Adair County or Columbia, Kentucky. But that is the new tornado watch that we have out until noon today. Now, uh, with the speed of those storms, this will likely uh, get canceled a bit early. Now, I do want to show you just the warning map as well to kind of clean things up to show you where we have all these warnings. That is a lot of tornado warnings, by the way, and the, sometimes these storms are moving so quickly they can outpace the warning. So it's not going to take long uh, to perhaps to get some tornado warnings here for our western counties. That would be Perry, uh, Breckenridge. Hopefully you'll stay south of that tornado threat there in Litchfield, but a uh, very close call there as well. So this is some serious weather. This is the area of concern that we're watching move east at about 50 miles per hour. So as we go back to our regular radar view here, uh, we'll go ahead and this entire line out as it moves to the east at about 50 miles per hour. Um, you can see it now already moving into Du Bois County around Jasper. Thousands of lightning strikes as well. The potential for some large hail too. We've seen reports of some large hail as this same line was moving through the St. Louis, Missouri area. Um, so this is uh, the latest track heading towards uh, Tell City here in just a few minutes into the English area of uh, Crawford County at about 734 Eastern Time and according about 750, 8 o'clock into Hardinsburg at about 7 o'clock Central Time, 8 o'clock Eastern Time, as I mentioned, into Louisville Metro uh, just after 8 o'clock this morning, into Elizabethtown at about 8.40, Newcastle at 8.50, and Frankfurt at 9.11 Eastern Time. And I do want to mention, this is just round one, and this might end up being the weaker line of storms that we have today. There's the chance that we have another area of some strong thunderstorms moving in around midday, uh, but a higher tornado threat late afternoon into the early evening time. And if we can uh, spend just a little time on Futurecast here, Sam, we'll kind of look ahead and plan out the day. We really need to be on guard to the threat of severe weather throughout our Tuesday today, as we are going to have on and off uh, rounds of some of these uh, showers and thunderstorms uh, potentially severe. So it's picking up pretty well on where we have the activity right now as we push forward and go hour by hour here a little bit later this morning. So this is locked on pretty good uh, after eight o'clock moving into the Louisville area. It's going to take a lot longer for these storms to move into areas off to the southeast and maybe even bypassing a lot of these areas off to the south of the Bluegrass Parkway for a while. Uh, so at the these storms continue to go over the same areas. Flash flooding is another issue that we might have to deal with. Uh, so remember, just do not try to cross any flooded roads throughout today, um, as that is going to be another concern. So we basically have all of the severe weather threats and hazards on the table uh, for this very busy Tuesday. Going a little bit further, maybe at about one o'clock, notice some of these heavier pockets moving through. That's through early afternoon. I think we're going to get a little bit of a break, and that's kind of a bad thing. That means we could break out into some sunshine, and that's going to refuel the atmosphere, make it unstable, and give us more fuel and ingredients for a potential severe weather outbreak later on this afternoon. We could hit highs in the mid to upper 70s, so very much like the month of May out there. Let's progress to about four o'clock. I'd say around three until eight o'clock. 
o'clock today is that higher threat of tornadoes and a potential uh, severe weather outbreak. Uh, so this looks similar to the other storms that we had um, we've, we have around the area this morning. The, the difference is we're going to have jet stream energy over the top of us. That warm, moist south wind, which is a very unstable air, and also a cold front pushing into the area, uh, pushing up these and kicking up these thunderstorms. Uh, so these could be rotating thunderstorms and supercells across the area uh, late this afternoon into the early evening time. What won't last too long. We've got about a five hour window. We're going to have to watch very closely if we move forward until about seven, eight o'clock, right around sunset, we're going to start to see that threat diminish and move off to the east. Uh, so again, a few different rounds of some severe weather potential for today with the greatest tornado threat appearing to be from around 3 until 8 p.m. The Storm Prediction Center is a division of the National Weather Service out of Norman, Oklahoma, and their one big job across the country is to look and see where severe weather might happen. So as we put up the Storm Prediction Center map here, Sam, uh, we are going to see that uh, we are under a moderate risk, which is fairly rare. We don't see a moderate risk very often. Sometimes it doesn't happen for years. In fact, the National Weather Service told me today that we haven't had a moderate risk in our air, much of our viewing area in over six years since July of 2018. So this is the area of highest concern. That's level four out of the five severe weather risk categories from the Storm Prediction Center. So we will get back to tracking what's out there now, but I want to give you a heads up for later today as well. Uh, this moderate risk of severe storms includes the potential of tornadoes, large hail, damaging wind, flash flooding, frequent cloud to ground lightning. Again, all the threats there are going to be possible for us. So far, southern Indiana, this is just general rain and thunderstorms. As we zoom into Metro Louisville, Sam, Notice that the rain is starting to slowly move up to the Ohio River over New Albany into Jeff and it's going to be moving into downtown very soon. But that's just plain old rainfall. There's no warnings on that. Uh, so what we're watching out for that higher threat is out to our west. Again, it's about I'd say about 60 miles out to the west of Louisville right now. Um, this is the severe thunderstorm warning that we have in place for Jasper, Patoka Lake, southwestern Orange County, uh, staying just south of the pa Paoli area and then into much of Perry County under that severe thunderstorm warning until 745 uh, Eastern time, 645 Central time. And then just to the west of you guys here in Perry County, um, this is a confirmed tornado on the ground that would be considered a tornado emergency. And we, we say that because uh, this this shape right here, this polygon, has a purple shading on it. So that is uh, going to be something we're going to be watching very closely. This is kind of a curled out region here. There are just some areas uh, that are rotating in this line of strong thunderstorms. And if we want to go switch to velocity, Sam, I'm curious if we'll start to see some blue colors here, and that's going to indicate the potential uh, for some some wind gusts over 50 to 60 miles per hour, even greater than that. Um, let's. This is the storm relative. Let's go to uh, the base velocity, and that will give us perhaps a, a better clue of some of the, the winds. And also, we should be using the, the the closest to the radar view as well, and that'll that'll help us out. But uh, w watching out here, yeah. So there, yeah. That, that, there's the, the really, really strong winds uh, that so here is Perry County, Leopold, Ferdinand, Interstate 64 moving through Du Bois County right here. Uh, that is a potential tornado on the ground right there. These wind speeds, if you want to try to query that, the warning might get in your way, Sam, for uh, for a minute. Sure. Uh, if you don't take that off. But so I bet some of these orange areas are over probably 80, 90 miles per hour. Um, so if you know some folks here, in the Gentryville area, you're going to be wanting to seek shelter uh, immediately as this is a, a potential uh, tornado on the ground. So um, that is, it looks like the radar switched, maybe radar sites, uh, and that made that color switch there. Uh, either way, we have uh, the potential damaging storm here, supercell storm that has moved past the Boone area uh, that has the potential of doing some, uh, doing some damage here uh, just out to the west of Perry County. Uh, so as we back up our view a little bit here and we'll put some more tracks. Let's do some segment tracks uh, along. You can do it right along the leading edge of those uh, high velocities. So the blue colors are going to be indicating wind speeds uh, greater uh, than 50, 60 miles per hour. A severe thunderstorm warning is issued when the wind speeds get up to around 60 miles per hour or greater. Uh, that's when you can have some damage to your home or, or outbuildings and uh, also the potential for some large hail as well.
Uh, so if you know some folks in these areas, this is just outside of our viewing area in the top half here. So near Santa Claus, Indiana over the next uh, 10 minutes or so and heading into Ranger at about 640 Central Time. Of course, we're Central Time just out to the west of Louisville. Uh, so into Leopold area in Perry County at about 645 into Branchville at about 648. Um, and if you want to just do the track along the regular uh, base reflectivity mode um, and we'll, that'll take it into uh, Louisville here and up to I-65 over the next hour to an hour and a half. So it looks like we've got a new tornado warning. So that's including Perry County. This is a large tornado warning, Sam. If you notice, yeah. it's, it covers southern Du Bois County into Crawford County, bumps up to English, Indiana. Uh, so uh, right up to right around Crawford County High School and then uh, northern half of Perry. Uh, so Perry Central High School and then back out to the west towards uh, Dale. Uh, so that looks like uh, our uh, definitely our biggest area of concern with the threat of a tornado. And th there was a tornado reported on the ground just out to the west of Santa Claus. So we're starting I, I just to move wanna, into our viewing area. Yes, yeah, Sam? I just want to mention, Ben, these storms are they're moving really quickly. I mean, the latest report on this tornado warning more posted for the Du Bois County area, your Santa Claus, Crawford, Perry counties. This storm is moving east at 65 miles an hour, Ben. So it's really important everybody does know about these thunderstorms because they're really trekking through really quickly. So um, a lot of us are not going to have enough time to really get prepared. It's just really important. Um, if you live even further east, about an hour to east of these storms, you're getting well prepared right now uh, with these thunderstorms or quick movers here. And you say prepared here, Sam, that is the key for today. You have a little bit of time, especially for areas in southern Indiana, um, because north of, say, Potoka Lake and north of this warning, uh, that air is fairly stable right now. That's not going to be the case for later today. We all, if you can hear our voices in the WHS 11 viewing area, need to be prepared for rounds of severe weather throughout the day today. And that means knowing where to go, know what to do. Let's go ahead and put on some of the slides there uh, to help get folks uh, prepared here, Sam, for later on today. It's not only a tornado threat. We've also got a flash flooding threat uh, that's going to be in existence for today as well as we're going to get repeated rounds of some rainfall and actually flash flooding and flooding in general is one of the highest, uh, most deadly threats from severe thunderstorms, believe it or not, even uh, worse than tornadoes. So you got to take flash flooding very seriously. Avoid flooded areas altogether as the water depth is unknown. And, and also, believe it or not, one to two feet, just one to two feet of flowing water can wash away vehicles and six inches of flowing water can knock you off your feet. And a lot of times there's that undercutting uh, where you just don't know the exact depth. Uh, what you thought was maybe just six inches can be even deeper with uh, as that water water gorges out uh, the mud and possibly even the concrete. So don't go into flooded basements either before ensuring that electricity is cut off. Let's get to some tornado information tips as well as you want to get away from the doors and the windows. You want to allow as many walls between you and the outside to protect you from uh, potentially any glass or debris uh, that might be f uh, f falling and flying around the area. So Avoid those windows and doors and outside walls. Green areas are the best places to be. Uh, interior portion of your house uh, in the stairwell, uh, interior hallway, bathroom, a basement is definitely going to be your safest place to be. Ensure that you have that safe or severe weather safety kit ready to go. Maybe some extra pillows or blankets to help cover yourself up um, and just have that safe place and know, make sure the entire family knows immediately where to go if a warning is issued. So that warning has been issued in Du Bois County, Crawford County and Perry County uh, with the potential of a tornado on the ground in those locations. So uh, definitely again preparation very key for a day like today on this April 2nd, a day before the 50th anniversary of the April 3rd, 1974 tornado outbreak. Let's get back to the radar. So again, this is not severe north of Louisville over southern Indiana right now. I say most of southern Indiana because uh, we do have areas off to the west of Louisville that now are now under severe thunderstorm warnings and some tornado warnings. We have a new severe thunderstorm warning that is now moving into Breckenridge County. So as Sam was mentioning, uh, these warnings are progressing very quickly with how quickly the line of storms is moving to the east at about 50 to 60 miles per hour. And there are some areas that jut out and are moving faster. Uh, these are the bow echo areas uh, that are being jutted out by some jet stream winds and sometimes the, the jet can make it to the ground and cause damaging straight line winds as high up as EF zero, potentially near EF one tornado strength 
damaging straight line winds. So we've been talking about all those different threats that we have out there. Also, just tons of lightning strikes. If we can try to query that as well, Sam, here uh, when you get time, I bet we've got hundreds of lightning strikes out of these uh, very potent supercell thunderstorms. So yeah, 987 lightning strikes here over the last half hour, almost a thousand lightning strikes in this view that we have boxed out here for you. Uh, so a new uh, severe thunderstorm warning that is just out to the west of Hardinsburg in Breckenridge County, just to the west of you in Meade County. And then uh, we have the southern areas of Perry County under that severe thunderstorm warning uh, that goes until 7 a.m. Central Time, 8 a.m. Eastern Time. We're coming up to 725 on your Tuesday morning when we would be doing our normal uh, cut into Good Morning America. Uh, but we are needing to stretch this out for longer to make sure you're aware of the severe weather threat. If you do that measuring tool here, Sam, from Louisville out to the basically English, this is just a view of how quickly uh, this storm threat is moving off to the east. So when we first came on, it was about 70 miles to the west of Louisville. Now it's only about 40 miles. Uh, now the biggest area that is having is showing us some rotation is just a little bit farther out to the west. And let's go ahead and go back to that uh, base reflectivity. Uh, actually, the base velocity, I should say here, Sam, uh, which is uh, moving right down Interstate 64. Um, and we're going to go from raindrop mode basically to how fast and which way the raindrops are moving. So that's the Doppler effect that we're watching. Um, so again, if we zoom in a little bit closer here, um, so this is just off to the south of Ferdinand near Santa Claus, Indiana. And a lot of you know that area. If we can click on some of these yellow areas, I'm very curious to see. You might need to click the warnings off. Uh, to get oh, to those. Yeah. Let me let me get rid of those warnings real quick. Yeah, take your time on that. So that's going to be moving uh, due east. Uh, so that showed about 40 mile. mile. I'm really surprised we're not getting oh, there. It is. Okay, so 74, 74. mile per hour. Um, and what we're doing is we're clicking on these individual tiny little pixels, um, and that is showing us the average speeds of the raindrops within that little area. Um, and so, so you can also get some quick rotation in here. This is a bow echo likely doing some uh, damaging uh, straight line wind damage here uh, just uh, near Santa Claus, uh, Indiana. So that is near Holiday World, of course, just south of the exit there on 64 along 231. Um, so that's moving very close, very quickly to the east. So heads up here if you're in the Leopold area, uh, getting into our viewing area in Perry County, uh, because this has been consistently, uh, and I'm not sure why it's switching over to that mode, that color palette. We just have a different color palette on, uh, it looks like that, that version of base re, uh, velocity. Either way, let's go ahead and back up. We'll go, go back to our regular reflectivity mode. I want to do update you. Uh, we mentioned it when we first came on here right after 7 o'clock uh, this morning that we do have a tornado watch that came out, out uh, just before the top of the hour for much of our viewing area. It does not include counties uh, basically north of Clark County, Indiana, uh, but a tornado watch until noon today that was uh, recently released. Uh, that does include Metro Louisville, does include most of our Kentucky communities. Uh, so within the tornado watch, we've, we're getting a, a slew of severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings out to the west. So in that color area that you see there, uh, that is the tornado watch until noon today. And so this is why there's not a tornado watch farther north. That is more stable air with temperatures in the 50s, uh, basically from Henryville north as Henryville just live dropped down to 58 degrees. But we're at 72 in Louisville. So it's this line right here, basically just south of Highway 56 in Indiana and south that has the threat of severe weather. Uh, so you're you're a lot more comfortable right now if you're Henryville north as far as this morning round of severe weather. Later today, still stay alert for uh, all spots in our viewing area. This is a summer like air in the upper 60s and lower 70s. And unfortunately, this time of the year, uh, as we head into the peak of severe weather season, when we get those temperatures way above normal, there's usually kind of a price to pay for that. And unfortunately, we're doing our best to try to dodge any severe weather for today. Uh, just uh, be prepared, be alert, and pay attention to the changing weather uh, for today. You can get our WHAS 11 app uh, on any of the app stores uh, that has interactive radar. It's got all the alerts and the warnings uh, that will help you out as well if you're, you're on the go out and about for today. Um, so you can always uh, let us know what's happening in your area when it's safe to do so. You can report any severe weather 
502-582-792. We'll pass along the information to the National Weather Service. You can include any weather photos or videos, and uh, we will get them uh, up on the screen as well as quickly as we can. Again, you can text 502-582-7290. Hey, Ben, quick, uh, yeah. what is, I just want to get to some of the information on these storms uh, just real quick. You know, the severe thunderstorm warnings that have been posted for the Perry County area, Breckenridge County, um, you can expect penny size hail and 70 mile an hour wind gusts with these storms. So we're focusing in on the tornado, of course, and the tornado warning, but I want to mention these storms are also producing some very destructive straight line wind. Um, ben, it's a lot, I know a lot of people can kind of forget about how destructive straight line wind can be, arguably um, as destructive as a tornado. So um, it's pretty important if you do reside in the English area, um, again, Breckenridge and Perry counties, as well as that tornado warning that is posted right over that area towards English and right over Santa Claus, Indiana. That is where this is. That's the main focus right now as these storms do really march their way quickly around 55 to 60 miles an hour off to the east bend. Yeah, and Sam, that's our main job here. We need to let folks know where these are heading. Let's go ahead. And, even though there's not necessarily a warning on the northern edge of this, still still some strong winds possibly coming down. So near Paoli and to English, let's track that out at 50, and then we'll do the bow echo that's down here, and then we'll go farther south. So it's a few different segments uh, to let you know where these storms are heading. So they're moving basically due east at about 50 miles per hour. There are some areas that are kind of jutting out a little bit faster than that from time to time as well. But a heads up here, uh, heading into the Hardinsburg, Indiana area at about 740 Eastern time uh, near Paoli here in just a couple of minutes into Palmyra at about 750 Greenville at 756 in the Pekin as we approach eight o'clock into Sellersburg just after eight o'clock and, and also included the Borden area uh, in the Borden Valley moving through West Clark uh, County in Indiana into Henryville at about 810 to 820 and then the uh, prospect Kentucky uh, moving over the river at about 820. OK, we're going to go ahead and do this segment that's just off to the southwest that includes a tornado warning. Be seeking shelter right now if you are in southern Du Bois County. Seek shelter if you're near the English area, southwestern Crawford County and Perry County, uh, where we have the ongoing tornado warning. So uh, there you can see right behind me uh, where we have the potential of damaging straight line winds. That is an impressive bow echo. It doesn't do it for no reason. There is a jet poking out and, and making that arc right there. On the northern ends especially, there can be what we call bookend vortices, and, and that is an area of rotation, and there can be tornadoes there, damaging straight line winds here, and more potential damaging, damaging straight line winds off to the south. So, so spend some time on where this is going into the Tell City area here in just a couple minutes. Candleton at 638 into the Alton area at 752, Leavenworth at about 756 Eastern time, New Amsterdam at 8 o'clock into the Brandenburg area at about 810, Georgetown, uh, Indiana at 819 and in the Valley Station. So we're getting closer to or into Metro Louisville uh, just after 8 o'clock this morning as well. So this is racing into Louisville within the next hour, it looks like. And notice, Sam, I mean, you, you, Take that out, that bow echo that hasn't been weakening, and that puts it right into Metro Louisville. So our hopes are, within an hour, this will be on a weakening trend. But it, it has stayed, stayed strong since west of Evansville. There was actually a tornado on the ground confirmed in southern Illinois and then near Evansville. So this has been a long track um, area of some damaging winds and a supercell there. Now off to the south, let's go further south, farther to the south here, Sam, to cover the rest of the severe thunderstorm warning uh, that is also likely moving east at about 45 to 50 miles per hour. I'll get out of the way for that. Uh, so heads up around the Hardinsburg, Kentucky area and uh, Litchfield. Uh, this is a track for you guys here off to the south uh, that'll go right over I-65 here over the next uh, hour to an hour and a half into the Beaver Dam area at 644 Central, Hardinsburg at 656 Central Time into Brandenburg at just after 8 o'clock this morning. Litchfield heads up there at 715 Central, 815 Eastern, Radcliffe 825 into Elizabethtown, 835 Hodgenville, getting into LaRue County at about 845 this morning. So that is a severe thunderstorm warning, meaning stay inside, seek shelter uh, until that uh, danger is over with. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, back up, look at the entire viewing area 
and just get our bearings once again. And uh, we'll, we'll look at all the watches and warnings and just kind of recycle here. You may hear us hear hear us say some of the same things, but we've got different viewers popping on and off at different times. The storms are moving so fast. We need to update that track. And again, that's that's our main job here is just to let you know where these storms are heading and what that threat is. Now we have thunder. We have lightning up and down I-71. That is not uh, a warning here. There's no warnings on this activity. And this is just plain rainfall, basically from Paley, Salem, and Madison North and north of Henryville, where the air is a lot more stable. Where we see the concentration of lightning strikes is where we have that higher threat of a tornado, possibly damaging straight line winds, maybe some nickel or penny size hail. Haven't seen a report of large damaging golf ball size hail with this. Now that might be the case later today as we have an even increased threat of tornadoes later on this afternoon. And, and just another heads up on that. That's around three until eight o'clock uh, later on today. Should we pull up future cast Ben just yeah, to get let's, over? Yeah, let's do that. Sticking the same thing here and, and, and notice as we as we look at this minute by minute, it's just out to the west of Louisville, so it's only about 30, 40 miles out to the west. And Futurecast has been doing a pretty good job on picking up where it is now, where it's initializing. And as we go ahead an hour or two, so right up to about 8, 830, uh, Futurecast has, has it moving through the metro Louisville area. What I don't see Futurecast picking up on Sam as much is that southern end, uh, which, is, uh, which is staying stronger than Futurecast is showing. Uh, Futurecast is not perfect. It's weather model data. It's made out of mathematical equations and, uh, of, of course, very strong computers. But as we look ahead, to lunchtime, uh, there is a chance that we could have these cells training over the same areas, just crossing the same areas, and that's going to lead us to an increased threat of a flash flood threat as we get closer to lunchtime and into the early afternoon. Uh, so this could be kind of a round two, as Futurecast has been uh, pretty confident on this. It's been consistent at, at around noon to one o'clock. Notice we've got some more pockets of heavy torrential rain, possibly strong thunderstorms here through early afternoon. Still possibly not the main event for today. After three o'clock, we're going to see the cold front come crashing into the area tied to jet stream winds. Also, you got the combination of a lot of wind shear and uh, the curving of the winds at the surface and also some moist, warm, unstable air with temperatures in the mid to upper 70s. So the air becomes more unstable later today. That's the fuel for these storms to become severe. So this is around 4 o'clock today. That's when these supercells right here could be rotating supercells and give us the increased threat of tornadic activity later on today. And that's why we are under a moderate risk of severe storms from the Storm Prediction Center, which is fairly rare for our area. This is around 5, 6 o'clock as uh, the front is moving closer to us. The storms are starting to move over I-65. And then as we go 7, 8 o'clock, as we approach sunset, the threat's going to be long gone for areas west of I-65. But as we approach sunset, that threat's going to be moving east of our viewing area. And then we can all relax after a busy weather day today. And behind that, we're going to have some cold air moving in. In fact, maybe a chance for some snow showers by tomorrow night. It's going to be a wild work week of weather. It's going to be cold and windy. We are looking live into our southwestern sky uh, where the storms are going to be approaching from here over the next half hour and moving into Metro Lule. So there is uh, the approach to the Clark Memorial Bridge there on 31. Uh, live view with our first savings bank cam, part of our UofL health camera network. I think I've got the Galt House cam pointed that direction too. If you yes, just I'm popping that up right out. now. A lot of raindrops on that camera. Um, yeah, look yeah. how busy that has been. I mean, this rain's coming down hard. I just want to reiterate too, we just got an update to this severe thunderstorm warning across Perry and Dubois County is now moving 75 miles an hour, Ooh. Ben, the storm itself. So that's crazy. They're quick movers. I would say right now in Louisville, just get prepared, stay inside, uh, get away from windows because once that wind starts kicking in, it's going to be packing quite a punch. Yeah, no doubt about that. The great update there because we were tracking these storms moving at around 50 uh, a little bit earlier this morning and now they're uh, picking up even more speed. That that also means um, that we've got a lot of jet stream energy tied into the equation. We were looking at the model data here a couple hours ago and as this as line is getting closer and right above the surface, not too high up, uh, some of the wind speeds could be over 80, 90, up to around 100 miles per hour. And when you get a thunderstorm to grow, it can sometimes 
take that jet stream energy down to the surface and that's when you get those bow echo features that's when you get possible spin up tornadoes so again just showing you some of the ingredients that we have to watch out for uh, so this is a uh, interstate 65 right here here's jefferson county metro louisville there is the threat of severe weather just out to the west that includes a tornado warning that is moving into the uh, perry county area in near english indiana let's go ahead and go back to base velocity and see if we're still seeing some consistent if not rotation, just some strong uh, straight line winds. We are seeing the winds whipping up even behind the leading edge. Uh, they're around Jasper, Potoka Lake. So really gusty conditions. Uh, even if you take a tornado threat out of the equation, uh, there's the potential of some damaging straight line winds here. Um, and and we're, we're just gonna have to watch out for that. Um, maybe even go to storm relative. We can just kind of click around the different velocity views. Sometimes we'll see some spikes in the velocity and some of these different views and uh, you can just kind of pick some of those pixels out and uh, see what we're dealing with. It doesn't look qu perhaps quite as strong as it was and, and that is our hope that we'll get some weakening trend here uh, as it moves mile by mile, mile uh, down 64 uh, eastbound. Um, so it looks like uh, some of the wind speeds aren't quite as bad but on this color palette, anywhere that you see blue is, is typically above 50 miles per hour. And uh, so we're just kind of looking at how fast and, and which way these raindrops are turning. It looks like there's been some rotation right here uh, near the Leopold area. And this would be on the, I believe, the leading edge of that bow echo. Uh, so that would be some rotation that we're going to need to watch out for. That's been pretty consistent there. Uh, earlier, there was a confirmed tornado on the ground just out to the west of Perry County. Uh, this is not confirmed. This is radar indicated right now. I still want to be in your place of shelter, seeking shelter here if you're in northern Perry County near the Leavenworth area. Uh, southern sections of Crawford County, uh, some rough travel in these areas around Crawford County along Interstate 64. So back to our regular radar view, the base reflectivity. Just want to see if we're still seeing some of those features of um, the potential of some damaging winds. And there's just a large area of real estate covered in severe thunderstorm warnings out to our west and just a, a mega concentration of lightning strikes. Uh, there are hundreds of lightning strikes here, which indicates that these storms are packing a punch and have a lot of energy and fuel to use. Over a thousand lightning strikes in this boxed out view that we have here. That is even more uh, than it was when we checked just a, a few minutes ago. Uh, so these storms are consistently staying strong. Sometimes we'll also look at that lightning count. If it goes down, that's an indication that we have some weakening. So we do not have a weakening trend just yet. Let's go ahead and zoom a little bit closer into that tornado warned area. Yeah, Ben, I just want to add to the tornado warning is canceled for Du Bois County. Good. It's just in effect now for um, Perry County uh, and Crawford County here in Indiana. So um, it looks like hail is not a big deal with this. We're just watching the tornado. It's moving east at 65 miles an hour. And I want to reiterate the tornado is radar indicated. It's not actually spotted, but you still need to be treating it very serious like there is one still on the ground. So again, that does go for our friends in Perry and Crawford. Crawford County here uh, until about uh, 7, 745 this morning, Eastern 645 Central Bend. Yeah, and these things can cycle too. They, they can they can touch down briefly. They can go right above the treetops and then they can touch down again. Sometimes uh, they're about as strong as straight line winds. Uh, but this is the bow echo right here. And then notice that there's the potential of some rotation uh, right here and there could be just little pockets. Sometimes these tornadoes aren't separated by very much. There can be rotation there, maybe a little bit here along Interstate 64. So we're watching any of these little notches, e any of these little curvatures uh, in this kind of ragged line right here that's uh, tied into those jet stream winds uh, that can produce those little spin up tornadoes. So uh, that is this is definitely from Crawford County south through Perry County. Uh, the biggest threat that we are watching right now and, and just want to be seeking shelter. And, it, and notice Sam 2, that leading edge right here, yeah, that's going to outpace the actual far edge of that tornado warned polygon uh, in the next, I'd say, five minutes or so. So as we get updates here with our live scans, uh, we're going to see that uh, either need to be expanded as a tornado warning or as a severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado possible.
Uh, so that means we can give you your first alert an early heads up that we will likely have some warnings expanded to the east to include Leavenworth and New Amsterdam and Brandenburg Lanesville. And it, it might not take too long if that holds together that we could end up uh, with some severe thunderstorm warnings, if not a tornado warning approaching the Louisville metro area. Uh, in the next, I'd say, half hour. So as we get to about 8, 10, 8, 15 a.m. after the 8 o'clock hour moving into the Metro Louisville area. Yeah, Ben, let me just add uh -huh. real quick. Sure. So, um, yeah, it's still a tornado warning. We did just see a message here from uh, the National Weather Service saying that they're not noticing kind of broad rotation in this tornado warning. They're mentioning that they're concerned about spin-ups, brief spin-up tornadoes within this cell. So, again, not, con not, not confirmation of an actual tornado on the ground. They're just mainly concerned and preparing everybody just in the event that we do get a brief spin up or two that could be really affecting some localized spots here. Yeah, and as usual, we're on the same page with the National Weather Service and what they are saying, uh, as we were mentioning earlier, uh, that spin up tornado potential and the damaging straight line winds, frequent cloud to ground lightning, the potential of some localized flooding uh, with this, and maybe some small hail. The hail right now this morning is not a big issue. That be, could become a bigger issue, maybe some golf ball size hail later today. We have an expansion of the tornado warning. I want to show you the track here first. Uh, so Brandenburg heading your way at 806. This is all the tornado warned area. In the Lanesville at 810 to 820, PRP 820 into Louisville 825 into Jeffersonville at about 830 this morning. So as we expected, and again, giving you that first alert, we've got the expansion of the tornado warning that goes almost up to Lanesville. So if we can clear out that track, and let's just go to the warnings because sometimes these maps get cluttered. We're analyzing all kinds of things. Uh, so we'll zoom into this tornado warning that goes through Cordon. Um, just had a baseball game there yesterday. Uh, so this is this tornado warning area. This this shape right here, this polygon is right along Interstate 64 from northern Perry County through Crawford County um, just to the south of English. That includes Cordon and then south down south central Harrison County and then clips the northern edge of the northern Mead County around the Leavenworth area, the big horseshoe bend right there and then back into Perry County. Then farther south, we haven't seen an expansion of the severe thunderstorm warnings farther to the east yet to cover more of Breckenridge or Grayson counties yet, but still some gusty winds, lightning and thunder, and some heavy rainfall will be possible for you guys. This tornado warning goes until 815 and it's moving so quickly um, that it's not going to take long to possibly be expanded into Louisville. So uh, a little early heads up. Maybe we're talking 815 to 830 this morning. We're going to need to watch out for some damaging straight line winds, frequent cloud to ground lightning, and maybe even a spin up tornado to be moving into uh, Louisville, crossing over the Ohio River from Harrison County and possibly from uh, New Albany and Floyd County, too. So this thing is riding right along the Ohio River and Interstate 64. So that is uh, the biggest threat that we have so far this morning. Just north of this tornado warning, yeah, we've got lightning and thunder and some, and some rain, uh, but north of that tornado warning, we're in the 50s here, so that is much more stable air. Louisville, 72 degrees. So we've got a co co contrast in temperatures here, and this is why we do not have a tornado watch over much of southern Indiana. We do have the tornado watch for our far southern tier counties of southern Indiana. In fact, let's go back to the tornado watch area that goes until noon today, Sam. So that includes Clark County, Floyd, Harrison, and Crawford counties and Perry County. Du Bois, thankfully for the moment, is now out of the severe weather threat for this morning round. Uh, but later today, still be alert because we'll have the potential for some more severe weather later this afternoon. Tornado watch also includes pretty much all of our Kentucky communities, excluding Adair County in Columbia, Kentucky. And again, this goes until noon today. So with that, we have isolated spin up tornadoes this morning. Midday, we might get an, a little extra round of some strong thunderstorms that move on through, but it's going to be around 3 until 8 p.m. when we see that uh, next possible main event of severe weather. So this is just kind of the beginning of what is a, a very busy weather day here on our April 2nd uh, and watching out for the potential of damaging winds and tornadoes today. Uh, so let's get back to our radar view and we can do that little ruler 
and show you how close that tornado warning is now to making its way into downtown Louisville and other parts of the Derby City here. Uh, so this is Corden. So we're only talking uh, 10 miles out to the west of Louisville's where that tornado warning begins. The higher threat right now is still back over Crawford County and Eastern Perry County. Lots of lightning strikes here watching for those concentrations of lightning. Uh, sometimes we see rotation in the strongest part of a thunderstorm and in that strongest part of a thunderstorm is those con the concentrations of those lightning strikes. So we're seeing uh, definitely a concentration right here along Interstate 64. And uh, so, yeah, it's not looking maybe perhaps quite as organized as it was, but embedded in that heavy rainfall, there is the potential uh, for some spin up tornadoes. So lightning strikes in the smaller boxed out view, 450 lightning strikes over the last uh, half hour. So this is a, a lightning factory using this very unstable air that we have over the area. Uh, and we have outside of any thunderstorms, by the way, we, we're going to have some wind gusts, possibly well over 30 miles per hour. It's going to be uh, very windy and warm out there. A lot of energy with this uh, overall storm system that's going to be moving over the Ohio Valley today. And ben, again, let me yeah. let me pull up Bob uh, base, base velocity here real quick for you as well. Um, are we seeing I mean, no broad rotation in this just a couple of spin-ups um, but still you just you never get want to get your guard down with this yeah and again in this color palette we're looking for blue orange and yellow a little bit of blue there near English indicating some uh, 66 mile per hour winds uh, so that can still do damage again a severe thunderstorm warning is issued when wind speeds are expected to be up around 60 plus miles per hour which uh, is certainly the potential here uh, near English and really at, at a moment's notice, uh, you can get these little spin-ups here and, and you can start to get some of those bright colors. So anywhere we have these little kinks right here, uh, that's where we have the possibility of a brief spin-up tornado. Um, so this is, this is why the National Weather Service has kind of issued this broad tornado warning for this area right here for the potential of little spin-ups. Um, so we're, we're just kind of watching this for a while here as it uh, continues to move to the east pretty quickly. Uh, earlier, I don't know, Sam, you mentioned it was moving uh, 65 plus miles per hour. Yeah, it was moving 65 plus. Uh, the latest update on these storms are moving east at 50. So they're generally anywhere between about, uh, you know, I would say 50 to 65 miles an hour is how quick the storms are actually moving themselves. Um, I'm actually loading up uh, our reflectivity real quick for everybody just so they get an idea on these thunderstorms. So they're actually marching pretty quick at 50 to 60 miles an hour. And Ben, like you've been alluding to, we still have that tornado warning just to the south and west here of Louisville, right over Cordon and I-64. I promise you, I. 64, we're dealing with some very heavy rainfall, frequent lightning, and some extremely strong wind here. Um, so again, Ben, a lot of people forget about straight line wind gusts with thunderstorms, especially when there's a tornado. So we're talking about strong wind along with that risk of a tornado. So uh, it's pretty important if you live in extreme southwestern Indiana and pretty soon here in Jefferson County, you get down inside, seek shelter, get to the lowest level of your home. And Sam, if you want to, while I talk over this uh, image right here, load up some more of our cameras, our U of L camera, and point those out west uh, because we've caught these little spin ups uh, live on camera before. Certainly hope that doesn't happen, but uh, we'll start to point some more of our metro cameras out to the west. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of time to do that. I think the U of L camera might be still pointed north, but this is a good view here um, from the approach to the Clark Memorial Bridge where the southbound lanes are open, not the northbound lanes, and looking over the Ohio River off to the southwest. So waiting, if this was nighttime, if it was still dark outside, we'd be seeing flashes of lightning all over the place. Um, but there you see uh, downtown uh, Louisville right now uh, with some heavy rainfall coming down. So be careful if you have any travel out there um, and make sure you're getting to your destination well ahead of any potential warnings um, that have been posted and that are out there um, this morning. Um, so we are looking at some different camera views here this this morning here at 753 on your early Tuesday morning or April 2nd, 72 degrees uh, waterlogged camera views here. This is our Belmont Village Senior Living Cam, part of our, our U of L Health Camera Network as we are waiting uh, for that stronger line of storms to start to move into Metro Louisville. We can go ahead and go back to the uh, radar view as uh, not seeing a whole lot out of the camera view at this moment other than some reduced visibilities and uh, some gusty winds out there as well as we're starting to see some brand new leaves on those trees and hopefully uh, a lot of our trees uh, will escape some damage and escape uh, some 
um, power line damage as well. Hopefully not too many power outages out of this uh, strong system moving into the area. Uh, so another piece of good news here. I'm not seeing the expansion of the severe thunderstorm warnings for Breckenridge or Grayson counties. Hopefully that'll stay the case. Uh, hopefully this will stay a weaker portion of the line. It's really right in the middle that we've been watching here for the potential of some damaging wind gusts and maybe even a brief spin up tornado. But uh, there are hundreds of lightning strikes still and we still have this tornado warned area just out to the west of Louisville that goes until 815 this morning. So let's go ahead and zoom back into that spot and then we're going to need to do some um, tracking again on where we have uh, the tornado warned area. So I would just kind of lead us out ahead uh, of where it's the deepest red right there east of Leavenworth and then take that track east at about 50 miles per hour gives an updated timeline here, but there you can see that the worst part of it now looking like it's right over the horseshoe bend of, of Meade County and uh, Crawford County there around Leavenworth. Um, so this is heading into the new Amsterdam area now into Corden at about eight o'clock. So heads up, want to be seeking shelter, getting to your place of shelter now. This is just going to be a brief inconvenience. So just make it uh, a brief, you know, stall out of your day to get to your place of shelter. And then we'll let you know when things are clear in your, in your find it to get back out and do whatever you need to do. And to Lanesville at about 810 Eastern time, Valley Station about 815, moving over downtown Louisville 820, Okalona at about 825, so also very near the airport, I-65, and into Fern Creek at about 830, into Fisherville at about 835 this morning. So I know it, it looks pretty ragged right here, but uh, again, it's been tied to some jet stream energy. It's been uh, had a history a little while ago of uh, doing some damage as well. Uh, putting down lots of lightning strikes here over uh, parts of uh, Crawford County. The good news here, if you're in western Crawford County, that threat is over with here for the morning time. Perry County, that threat is uh, moving east of your area, and the tornado warning is gone for Du Bois County uh, that I was out for a little bit earlier. Rain uh, intensity is starting to pick up the rainfall rates here over downtown within the waters and outside of the water set here uh, and it's lighter at the moment off to the south near Fairdale and the southeastern sections of Metro Louisville. This is uh, some torrential rainfall uh, and again a lot of this is going to be going over the same areas. We're going to need to watch out for ponding of water on the road surfaces and there could be some flash flooding in some areas especially later this morning and into the afternoon as some of these storms continue to go over uh, some of the same areas. So hey Bennett, up, yeah. I just want to reiterate real quick to you. We just did got Got, got a couple updates. Perry County is canceled um, from that tornado warning, which is some good news. And uh, we are still seeing the tornado warning persist for Crawford, Harrison and Meade County here. So I just want to reiterate those in Perry County out of the woods with that tornado warning. Uh, but again, the main focus is going to be along the Ohio River and uh, on either side of the river here from Louisville towards uh, much of the Harrison County and Crawford County area. Ben. Yeah, I'm curious if we don't see much organization um, with the velocities that perhaps this will turn into a severe thunderstorm warning in watching out for some pockets of damaging winds. Um, so this was this was a nicely formed bow echo about a half hour ago, but now it's it's just kind of ragged looking and, and that's what we, we, we want disorganization overall. That means uh, that the the storm is not as organized, not as strong and robust as it was, um, but we're going to obviously keep a very close eye on this. We've got heavy rain, lightning and thunder coming down from Palmyra, New Salisbury, in Accordion, New Amsterdam, Leavenworth. Uh, the worst of it is now east of you in English. I know we were calling you guys out earlier in that tornado warning. It looks like you're safe for now. Just a heads up later today, there's still a threat of some severe storms and some tornado potential later on in this in the afternoon. Heavy rain coming down into Louisville now, and we don't have many lightning strikes yet. The concentration of higher lightning strikes are still just out to the west. This tornado warning goes until 815 this morning, which is just across the river. I mean, we're talking Shively and Valley Station. It looks like it's only about 10 miles out to the west of you, you guys as the crow flies. Let's check out the base reflectivity as it gets closer to Metro Louisville. Maybe we're getting some uh, better indications of some of the wind speeds here as it gets closer to the radar site. Now the radar site here is near Fort Knox, and so we're looking pretty closely as uh, closer to the surface as the radar goes up in elevation and distance away from the radar. 
Um, so it doesn't look like anything real extreme right now. And certainly we want that to be the, the trend, uh, but there's still the potential uh, for some pockets of winds in excess of uh, uh, 50, 60 miles per hour here. It looks like perhaps we've got a new tornado warning for yes. back out and see where that one is located. This new tornado warning is actually for Breckenridge, Harrison and Meade County. So a continuation of it, um, it's located the possible tornado and excessive straight line wind damage is actually located about 14 miles west west of Brandenburg. This storm is moving east at 40. So it looks like the worst of the storm is located just to the east or west of Brandenburg and it's moving east at 40. Um, Brandenburg, this storm is going to be over you at 810. Um, so again, this storm is, uh, is tornadic and has the potential to produce a tornado. So pretty important. Uh, you are getting to the lowest level of your home right now, Ben. So let's move to the southwest where that warning is. That's going to be uh, down to the southwest. Where, uh, yes, yeah, where you're where you're pointed there. Um, so it look, it, we will have the, you know, pop the warnings back on as well. Uh, I know you took that off for the uh, velocity. So this includes Brandenburg now. So we've got the, the southern section where we have the potential of a spin up tornado. Uh, so that would be right here in the northern tip of Breckenridge County off to the northwest of Irvington. Here's uh, Highway 62. Um, so this is going to be moving through basically the central sections of Meade County. This is a, a skinnier tornado warning. Um, that goes up to almost, uh, again, the radar site here at Fort Knox. Um, and we're not seeing really real indications of tight rotation or anything like that, but just the potential uh, that there could be some spin ups. And sometimes we'll see it in this kind of case, maybe a little bit better in the reflectivity if, if we see uh, maybe a little bit of a curvature. Um, so we maybe go back to the radar, regular radar view. Um, uh, so yeah, it looks like maybe it's these little notches that we're watching. Yeah, there's there's definitely some curvature. You see that the rain kind of bends back toward itself. There's a bounded area of weak echo uh, right there near the Mockport area. Um, so that indicates again not seeing it necessarily really well with the velocity mode, but uh, we're seeing it a little bit better on our regular radar mode. Uh, so we're getting some little circulation, some little notches. Uh, here, so the National Weather Service has uh, put out a tornado warning here for the Mockport area, Brandenburg. Be seeking shelter immediately. Stay calm. Get to your place of shelter now. Um, so that's right along the Ohio River in southern Harrison County and in northern Meade County, again, including the town of Brandenburg. Um, this is uh, again just a, hopefully this is not a tornado on the ground. This is radar indicated. This has not been confirmed. It hasn't been seen. This might be kind of a rain wrapped area of rotation, uh, but something like that is a lot of times like an EF0, EF1, which can be similar to straight line damaging winds. Uh, nonetheless, want to be in the lowest level of your home, away from the doors and the windows. Let's put a track on that area of rotation and we'll take that out uh, to the east at about 50 miles per hour. So uh, seeing some rotation still here near the Brandenburg area. Um, this is not too far off to the southwest of Metro Louisville. Um, so that area has a track on it now heading towards the Meade County High School here in just a couple minutes. It's right now 8.02 on our early Tuesday morning here. We got some rain cool air now metro at the lower 60s heading to Laconia at about 810 into Buena Vista at 815 Evans Landing at about 815 as well and then into the Robert Frost Middle School area as we approach 820 into West Point and towards Fort Knox at 820 in the Barrelton area at 825. Uh, so it, it looks like as we, we still have the tornado warning to the north because Again, we're still seeing some of these little curvatures. We see one of those south of Corden. And we're talking about these little notches right here. Again, these don't happen for, for no reason. There, there, there is some rotation happening and pulling uh, the line of storms around um, and, and possibly causing some of this rotation right there. So we've got a few of these little notches that we're watching and we're, we're giving you the track on that. Let's go ahead and, and, and clear our view here so we can clean up this radar view. And I want to see Louisville in the view and then also this area just out to the west. So we still have this area under the tornado warning until 815. Um, that includes much of Harrison County, including uh, the Corden area. So we'll go ahead and put a track basically on this leading edge. And as I mentioned, a lot of times these are moving so fast, the leading edge, which is the most dangerous part, can outpace 
the last part of the polygon or that tornado warning. Um, so with that track, here's an update as it's uh, moving pretty rapidly off to the east and, and pretty close to moving over the Ohio River uh, into Louisville. So this is going to be moving into Lanesville and just a couple minutes into Elizabeth, Indiana, near the casino at about 810, Valley Station at 815, uh, into downtown Louisville or near parts of downtown Louisville near the airport at about 815, into Fairdale at 820, Okalona at about 820, 825, into Fern Creek at about 830. That'll put it pretty close to J-Town as well, and the Fisher at about 835. So there you have it. Uh, that is an area uh, of still of concern, a threat with the potential of uh, weak spin up tornado or possibly some damaging straight line winds here uh, over Harrison County. So we've got two tornado warnings. Uh, it, I want to show you that also as much as we will show you where it's going, we want to show you where it's clear because we, we pointed you out earlier. You were right in the middle of it, Leavenworth. So that threat is gone for you in Leavenworth, and that threat is now gone. You're in the clear here in Perry County, Crawford County now in the clear. You just had the tornado warning for yourself. Uh, so the worst of it is now moving east of the Leavenworth area. It's not going to take much time for you guys in Corden to be out of that threat of severe weather as well. Um, the worst of it's going to be moving east of you here in just a couple minutes. So you won't need to be seeking shelter much longer. That threat is going to be moving into eastern Harrison County over the Ohio River into Valley Station, PRP, Shively, and over towards Iroquois Park and uh, near the Fairdale area, Jefferson Memorial Forest here over the next 15 minutes. So we need to watch out for some of that rotation as well. Sam. Hey, Ben, we'll get back to the tornado warning in just a sec. I did get word that Scottsburg is reporting a lot of lightning right now. Um, this is actually a look at uh, we're dealing with some very heavy rainfall, strong wind in Scottsburg. Of course, Scottsburg is kind of near the cooler, more um, stable air mass with this um, whole complex of thunderstorms, Ben. But I, I just want to bring in that direction. Here's actually a look at the Galt House. Um, you can see on our Galt yeah, House your camera. Yeah, cloud of ground lightning. Yeah, that was a big time lightning strike. Um, this is a live look at Jeffersonville, the Jeffersonville cam. So looking towards downtown Louisville, and you can't even see across the bridge and across the river right now. Uh, that's how heavy this rainfall is coming down across um, much of Jefferson County and Clark County, Indiana. And uh, that's another thing to continue to mention here as this rain continues to come down heavy this morning. Could have more rounds around midday, more rounds later this afternoon. So this is going to really saturate the ground. We've needed some rainfall. It's been a pretty dry spring, but uh, this could lead to some flash flooding in some areas. And we need to remind you just please do not try to test that water out. Turn around, find a different route if you find some flooded roadways in your area. Um, flooding is one of the most dangerous, life-threatening aspects of severe weather. So uh, there's your flood safety. You just want to avoid flooded areas altogether as that water depth is unknown. Turn around, don't drown is the old saying there. Remember your old friend Tad, turn around, don't drown. One to two feet of flowing water can wash away vehicles. Six inches of flowing water can knock you off your feet. And don't go to any flooded basements before ensuring all that electricity is turned off. Uh, some tornado tips as well, if we want to get to, to that too, um, is uh, you just want to stay away from all your doors and windows. We want to get into the most interior section of your home, and uh, we're just loading that up. That's why I had a little blank screen there for a second. Um, there, there's a live view out there now, some of that heavy rainfall. Um, so again, the green is the best place to be, maybe an interior bathroom, interior hallway, closet, maybe the stairwell. Basement is the best place to be. If you have time, plan ahead, as we mentioned all throughout Good Morning Kentuckiana, um, that if you live in a mobile home, you want to find a sturdier shelter to be in if their warning is issued. You can uh, have that severe weather safety kit ready to go. And if you're not under a threat of severe weather right now, you don't have any warnings. This is just a reminder that later today, we could even have a three until 8 p.m. later today. Uh, so a time to get your items in place uh, to be safe and be prepared uh, for that uh, safest place in your home or in your place of work or business. Okay, back hey, to... Should we show FutureCast real quick, Ben? Future I know you've been mentioning this afternoon. Yeah, and yeah, it looks like we've got another update uh, to FutureCast here with some fresh data, uh, which is right in line with where it's coming into our area basically right now. Um, as we push it forward, uh, we'll head towards lunchtime. It looks like we might have some redevelopment and that would be a problem as far as some flash flooding as we get towards uh, lunchtime and into the early afternoon hours. Best case scenario is that these storms work over the atmosphere 
and, and provide a lot of clouds into the afternoon. The cloudier, the better. That's what we're wishing for. If we break out to sunshine, there's more concern of that. We're not seeing much thunderstorm activity here around Bardstown, south of Campbellsville. This could be a recipe uh, with a lot of ingredients for severe weather where we don't see many, many clouds. Where it stays cooler, we're going to be safer later today. That means the air is more stable. If it starts to really warm up underneath some of that early April sunshine, that air might become really ripe uh, for the potential of that higher tornado threat later today. So as we move forward, this is 2 p.m., future cast showing around 3, 4 o'clock out ahead of the cold front that's going to be coming through the area, helping to kick up the, the next round of thunderstorms. Uh, there's a lot of still jet stream energy, south breeze out ahead of the turning wind from the west. Uh, so this gives us the potential of rotating supercells. So staying busy throughout the day today, you can see that it is going to be an active weather day. Uh, so heading to 4 o'clock, I mentioned around 3, 4 o'clock until 8 p.m. with that highest severe weather threat. As we move forward another couple hours here, um, Sam, we'll take it to about 8 o'clock and hopefully it's a little bit sooner. Yeah, it looks like about 8 o'clock that severe weather threat rapidly coming to an end. So sunset, things are beginning to really quiet down across the area, but also be going to be cooling down. We've got some cold air racing in tonight. In fact, we might see some snowflakes in that forecast for tomorrow night. It is a crazy, crazy wild start uh, to our early April. New se severe thunderstorm warning is just been issued here, Sam. So let's go back to reflectivity yeah. as the storms get closer uh, to moving over the Ohio River and into Jefferson County and into the Louisville, uh, the yeah. entire Louisville metro area. Ben, some of the information on this now, we're noticing kind of a weakening trend actually, which is some good news. This storm only 60 miles an hour with it. I mean, you still got to be taking it very seriously, but that's as opposed to the 70 mile an hour when we had earlier on uh, about a half an hour to about 45 minutes ago. These storms still moving to the east rather quickly around 60 miles an hour as well. Um, the worst of the storm right now is right over the Hardensburg area uh, towards Maples Corner, um, Garfield, and uh, so over southeast Mead and Breckenridge County and Hardin County. This goes until 8:30 Eastern Time here, Ben. Yeah, and obviously some very heavy rainfall coming down out ahead of the potential rotation, the potential areas of some weak spin-up tornadoes, which is this zone right here between Corden and Brandenburg. So that is where we have that uh, isolated spin-up tornado threat. New severe thunderstorm warning is farther south. That includes the rest of Mead County. And it's for that line right there that's moving into the Irvington area. The potential of some pockets of damaging straight line winds, maybe in excess of 60 miles per hour. But also notice if we go farther south here, Sam, we've got a new severe thunderstorm warning that bumps into western Hardin County, including the Eastview area. Also the northern half included of uh, uh, Litchfield, uh, Litchfield, but also Grayson County, the Rough River area and then the southern areas of Breckenridge County. So that goes until 745 Central Time, 845 Eastern Time. Uh, so a couple of new uh, severe thunderstorm warnings here, the, the potential of some damaging, um, damaging winds coming down right around the edge of Rough River here. You can see a concentration of lightning strikes and some very heavy rainfall there. Um, you're kind of in the gap right now in Hardinsburg, but uh, you'll get some brief heavy rainfall in your area. The good thing is this is, again, just going to be a brief inconvenience. Get your place of shelter, and then it's going to be moving quickly off to the east as we see that line clearing just out to the west. And, and, and briefly, before we go back to the tornado warning, I want to go, go ahead and put the, the RADSAT on the composite and show us the regional view and see what activity that we might have uh, back farther off to the uh, south and the west. Yes, let me um, let me get the satellite yeah, up just, for you everybody. Can just back up that view right there. Yeah, satellite. Okay. So again, this is uh, round one of the severe weather threats for today. Um, yeah, he'll get the radar back on there. That's level two. Let's get level three on. Yes, there we there go. There we go. All right. So even farther back. Let's go in the entire sure. region. Sure. Um, so. There's a little more activity off to the southwest. Um, that might be some of our midday stuff that rides up along that stationary front. And then the cold front out uh, farther off to the west in the center of low pressure. Um, so uh, it's just an active storm system that's going to be moving through the area uh, for today. 
Um, so as we and, and then what we don't want is the breakout of sunshine. Uh, we're trying to avoid that for the afternoon, which would make things uh, much, much more unstable across the area. Should we do take a look at Cape real quick? Uh, yeah, we can Suspension, certainly do that. Yeah. So CAPE is the available energy for storms. Uh, this convective available uh, uh, storm energy here. Um, and it's, it's not much at all here north of the front where temperatures are in the 50s over much of southern Indiana. Still have a little bit of energy for that severe weather over our, our Kentucky communities and south of the Ohio River. It is much higher off to the southwest. Now, as we do start to warm up later today, we're going to see this storm energy increase across more of the region, and that's going to basically kind of prime the pump and ripen the atmosphere for the potential of even a higher severe weather threat for later this afternoon from uh, I'd say around 3 until 8 p.m. later on today. So we do have a tornado watch that can, continues until about noon today for counties along the Ohio River and south. Now, a lot of this is going to be chopped off. We're going to see a lot of these counties gone for a while from the tornado watch. That's not to say we might see another tornado watch for later on this afternoon uh, with round two or three of uh, some more thunderstorms that will be moving through the area. Hey, Ben, I want to mention some good news, too. The National Weather Service is actually expiring this tornado warning at 815. So in a minute, um, it will be expired. So I just want to reiterate that to everybody. Fantastic news there. Yeah, we're just not seeing any real organized areas of rotation with this. And, and that was the hope that we would see some weakening and this, this whole line becoming a little bit more disorganized. Nonetheless, let's go ahead and zoom way in here to Metro Louisville, uh, where that warning has popped off now. It is expired, so we no longer have the tornado warning. We have a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings off to the south. So it looks like kind of transitioning from that threat of those circulations, those weak spin up tornadoes to maybe some isolated pockets of some damaging wind gusts, heavy rainfall, lightning and thunder and some gusty winds pretty much all over Metro Louisville. Thankfully, no warnings. We, didn't, we don't even have a severe thunderstorm warning out uh, for Louisville right now. Again, the only severe thunderstorm warnings that we have out for areas are off to the southwest portions of uh, Meade County and Breckenridge County. Uh, that includes Irvington and around Brandenburg, and then also here around Rough River, northern uh, Grayson County into western Hardin County. And those go until 7.30 and 7.45 Central Time, uh, of course, 8.30 and 8.45 uh, Eastern Time. Uh, so we'll keep an eye on uh, those severe thunderstorm warnings. Uh, and as we look ahead here, not look ahead, but let's just go back to the metro area um, and, and see some of these yeah. heavy rainfall rates. And actually, we might be able to take a, a, just a couple of views outside before we return to Good Morning America because it looks like that severe weather threat is uh, diminishing for a little while here yeah, let's, this morning. Let's take a look at Scottsburg real quick. Um, I'll pop that into a, a big live camera of ours. Um, I know Scottsburg has been arguably seen uh, the heaviest if, rain so far. A lot if you of, hit that banner on top, you should be able to go to live camera view too. Okay, yeah, there's okay. the there's the live shot from Scottsburg here. So, um, but it looks like the winds kind of dissipate a little bit in Scottsburg from what I can tell from that camera. Uh, we're just noticing some lightning there and some pretty heavy rain. Uh, here's a look from the Galt House. So you can see a lot of raindrops in the Galt House camera. Uh, some lightning too. You know, we're just seeing some really heavy rainfall rates in Louisville. I mean, I would say rainfall rate is up to about an inch per hour with these thunderstorms. So it's going to be um, basically total blind uh, type conditions to be driving in this right now. It's going to be uh, tough to see basically no visibility. That's actually a look from Jeffersonville looking at downtown Louisville. You can't even see the second street bridge. That's how um, heavy of rain we're, we're noticing here, uh, Ben. Yeah, it looks like we'll try to stay on for another 13 minutes or so here for you um, as we be coming up to our Good Morning America cut-ins anyway. But yeah, we are getting some frequent flashes of cloud to ground lightning strikes. It, it, and the old saying is, when the thunder roars, head indoors. Um, so just use Mother Nature as your guide uh, to just stay inside until um, the thunderstorm moves on through your area. And again, it won't take too long to get this storm out of the Metro Louisville area. There can be some isolated instances uh, some power outages too, just from the frequent lightning strikes, perhaps hitting some uh, transformers. Um, and there you can see uh, all of our cameras reduce visibility across the area. Some really big raindrops coming down across Kentucky Anna, this morning. Yeah, Ben, and I want to mention too as well, I know um, one of our reporters, Jim Stratman, he actually got video um, actually just outside our studios of those dark, ominous looking clouds. I think that came in about 20 to 30 minutes ago and uh, some decent rain coming down. So um, we definitely saw all of it here in Louisville as well. Yeah, and sometimes we, we get what we wish for in, in too big of a helping this time of the year because I know a lot of folks are wanting some rainfall, putting out the fertilizer, 
Uh, the grass is growing and we just haven't had much rain this springtime, uh, but now we are getting uh, loads and loads of it over the area and it can become too much in a short period of time, uh, which could lead us to some problems with flash flooding uh, through portions of this morning. So that's going to be a concern too. outside of the severe wind or ten tornado threat. Need to watch out for the potential of some flash flooding. You just saw the American flag uh, blowing in those breezes outside of any storms. We are going to have um, warm and windy conditions. Once this first batch moves through, we're going to keep that south wind uh, that's going to pump in more moisture, more warm air. We'll make it to the mid to upper 70s likely this afternoon uh, and we continue to see just continuous flashes of lightning even in the daytime here. Um, so we can barely see uh, the Clark Memorial Bridge at this time. Um, we're going to get back to the radar view here in just a moment um, and show you what we have left as far as severe weather potential. We've got a couple severe thunderstorms mornings off to the southwest of Louisville. Uh, definitely have some rain cooled air. Uh, we were at 72 about an hour ago and now we're down to 60 degrees um, and there is uh, this first batch of severe weather potential that's cruising through the area um, and is th this tornado warning expiring as well soon? Um, it looks like this one is just issued a minute ago. This actually goes for Breckenridge, Meade counties in Kentucky, moving east at 50 bends. So the storm moving a little slower. Okay. Um, it'll be a little more prolonged of a tornado warning that's po uh, posted. But again, this is just to the west of Fort Knox, right over Irvington right now. Uh, that's where that active tornado warning is. So I'm just going to pop up the uh, timing of it. So again, it goes till 845 Eastern, 745 Central. This storm marching to the east at 50. It's radar indicated, but you still got to be treating this tornado warning like there is an actual tornado on the ground, Ben. I'll send it over to you. Yeah, that, so that's along Highway 62 as you head out of Fort Knox. Um, so right here, this is uh, where we, again, this, we're just watching little possible little notches here. A weak spin up tornado. This could possibly be like EF0, EF1 if it is a tornado on the ground. We do not have confirmation that the tornado is on the ground, but best thing to do is just to seek shelter while it's issued. That is the southern sections of Meade County here, just out to the west, southwest of Fort Knox, including the Beulieville area. Uh, so that track that uh, Sam just put on there, uh, heading towards the Corners area at about 723 Central, uh, of course, of course, 823 Eastern time in the big spring as we head towards 730 um, Central time and then the Fort Knox about 830 um, and the Gaffey Heights at 832 Vine Grove at 837 into Radcliffe uh, just a little bit after that to the, to the Longview area. Uh, just a few minutes after that as well. Uh, so we've got a kind of a side by side view here of the heavy rain, lightning and thunder coming down over Louisville. Louisville does not have a warning at this time, but uh, there are just flashes and flashes of lightning coming down. Hundreds of lightning strikes uh, in this strong batch of storms moving through the area. So uh, looking at our reflectivity here, th th this is what is the concern here, Sam. You've got these bright spots. Any of these could be weak little spin up tornadoes. Uh, they're little curvatures and they're usually really small like that. They're not big, long track tornadoes. So they kind of dip down uh, really quickly, pop back up, don't last very long, um, and they can kind of ride along that leading edge. Uh, so that is why we have a tornado warning in Meade County. So that threat is now south of you guys into the east of Brandenburg. You guys were j in Mockport. You guys were just. Uh, on, under that tornado warning uh, that expired for you. So now the tornado warning is just off to the south. Very near Fort Knox. Let's go ahead and zoom into Fort Knox. Yeah, I was very near say, the radar a, site. That's a pretty good uh, signature right Get there. Get tight to that there. So that looks like the potential of a little spin up tornado uh, near Fort Knox. So be seeking shelter if you're right there by 31 and where uh, Highway 60 come together uh, and 1638. Uh, I was calling it 62 earlier. I meant Highway 60. Just out uh, the Davidson low too. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, right there is the radar site uh, down 30 Highway 31. Um, in this far northern Hardin County. Um, this is, go ahead and get the street finder out as well as we can go a little bit closer. So right there by Muldraw um, is where we have, uh, what is that, Brandenburg Road there? Yeah, Brandenburg Station Road, just the northwest of uh, Fort Knox, um, also known as Dixie Highway, right along 31 West, um, if not uh, Highway 60 towards uh, Muldraw. So uh, keep that in mind. Yeah, so the potential of some rotation here is what we're looking at. Uh, be in your place of shelter, if you're around Fort Knox, Muldraw, 
um, and, and right just to the northeast of the Grampton area, right at uh, 31 and the 60 um, junction. Um, so that is uh, as you're moving from Meade County into northern Hardin County, that northern tip of Hardin County into the Fort Knox area. Uh, so let's go ahead and back up our view a little bit. Um, so that is an area of rotation there that we are watching. Go ahead and put that warning back on as well. Yeah. Uh, really not concerned mm. about the overall speed of the raindrops. We're more concerned about um, how they're moving um, because this can put down some very quick uh, rotations uh, or um, possibly some vortices, meaning uh, some quick spin up tornadoes are going to be possible. So this is where we had that south of Brandenburg. It's just a small, fairly small tornado warning that goes until 845 or 745 uh, central time uh, that comes right up to near Fort Knox and Radcliffe. But uh, sometimes, Sam, you know, these are issued and then five minutes later that threat can can move a little bit north or south or east or west, but I'm still seeing a little bit of a notch right there in the middle of that tornado warning, which is just off to the east of the Irvington area. Uh, so these notches are what we're going to be watching because that that indicates there's some rotation kind of tugging on the line of rain and giving us the potential of a tornado right there. So this is just south of Highway 60, just off to the southeast of Irvington, just to the west northwest of Vine Grove, just to be safe. Even though you're not in that tornado warning, you want to stay inside here. If you're around Fort Knox, Radcliffe, Vine Grove, these things move very quickly. Um, so this is the, the leading edge of that wind shift. And then we're getting little areas of rotation right along uh, Highway 60 here in Meade County. Um, so every scan is going to kind of look different where there's just little, little tiny areas of rotation that we're watching for. Very close to Metro Louisville, by the way. There are, Fort Knox is right here. Uh, Valley Station's right here. So this is just off to the southwest of Louisville. We'll, hopefully, we'll keep that threat of uh, damage and potential tornadoes off to the south of uh, southwest of Louisville. So again, this goes until 8:45. For um, I'm not really concerned about Breckenridge County anymore. It looks like that threat is now east of you guys in Irvington. The main deal here is along and just south of 60 in Meade County and then approaching Fort Knox and Radcliffe and Vine Grove uh, where we have this tornado warned area. Let's do kind of a smaller track from that leading edge and we'll take it into the rest of uh, Hardin County and then possibly in the Bullet County just to give you a, sure. a first alert, little early heads up here. Um, so this is the area of threat where we've had some uh, possibility of some little spin ups heading into the Flaherty area at about 830 into Radcliffe at 835, North Harden Christian School at 837, Rogersville 837. So if you know some folks nearby or you live nearby these communities, there's always some smaller communities surrounding these, these towns. I uh, want to be seeking shelter as well into the Hayes School area at about 842 ben, Eastern time. One thing I want to mention too, we still have a lot of lightning with these thunderstorms, over 600 lightning strikes. I know earlier on we saw upwards of about a thousand lightning strikes, still 600 at the 830 AM time frame. So we're nowhere near the heat of day. We're still dealing with some very energized storms. Also kind of notice in the left portion of your screen, let's actually look at lg News website. They're actually estimating about 850 people are without power um, already this morning and it's um, just an hour past sunrise, Ben. So a very active day ahead of us and um, it's one of those deals where you just have to make sure all your appliances are charged cell phone laptop um, any kind of means to to get the latest on uh, severe weather alerts because you don't know if you're going to lose power today yeah good reminder as well and, and this is always on a delay too so we'll, we'll often get power outages coming in uh, a little bit uh, behind the storms as they move through uh, a lot of these power outages are likely just to the frequent cloud to ground lightning strikes we're just seeing flash after flash uh, with our metro cams and still you know the biggest area of threat is here just to the south of brandenburg where we have a small tornado warned area <laughs> until 8:45, so about 15 more minutes um, then we have a severe thunderstorm warning as well for that a little cluster here that's moving into western Hardin County from Rough River. Lots of lightning strikes here cruising uh, north of the Western Kentucky Parkway. Bless you, Sam. I know we got allergies going on uh, this time of the year. Uh, so there's uh, Highway 60 um, again between Irvington and Fort Knox. 
is where there is the potential of a spin up tornado. Still looks like we've got these little notches here. And with this environment and how low the clouds are to the ground, uh, just above the treetops really, um, it, it doesn't take much distance to get this area of rotation, these little vortices or spin up tornadoes down to the ground. They can briefly do some damage, kind of like straight line wind damage, maybe winds around 70, 80, 90 miles per hour. Uh, can do damage to the roof of your home, some outbuildings, garages, it can flip trampolines, it can do all that kind of damage. Uh, but these are the weaker style tornadoes, EF0, EF1. These are not long track. They don't last very long. Uh, they just spin up and down, they pop up and down. Um, that's what we have this case right here where we've had uh, this, this area just kind of jutting out uh, as well. So I'm going to continue to watch these areas of concern, these, uh, these spots where we have uh, the threat of some uh, weak spin up tornadoes. Um, that's what we told you yesterday was going to be the case this morning. Weak spin up tornadoes. Later today, there is the concern of stronger tornadoes from around 3 until 8 p.m. later on this afternoon. So this is just, again, kind of an appetizer round one uh, to get us all ready for even possibly a bigger threat later on today. So this is just a very strong storm system that we're watching here for you. Let's go ahead and move to the north and we'll check out Louisville again where we're, we're still seeing a, a big concentration of lightning strikes, frequent cloud to ground lightning and some very heavy rainfall um, coming down heavy from Anchorage uh, down to Fern Creek down into Bullitt County, down to Shepherdsville. Pretty soon that rain is going to be picking up intensity uh, through Mount Washington too. So we are getting a report of some power outages with possibly some pockets of isolated damaging winds in combination uh, with the frequent cloud to ground lightning strikes that we have, uh, even a lot over downtown. We're seeing just one after another uh, still of these lightning strikes and reduced visibility with this very heavy rainfall. And Sam was mentioning uh, probably an inch, maybe one to two inch rainfall rates per hour. Um, so that can definitely cause some ponding of water on the roadways and some frequent flood spots, those low lying areas that you know around your neighborhood. Got to watch out for that. Uh, new severe thunderstorm yeah, warning. Looks, looks like we got a new warning. Uh, this one is now posted for, let me uh, click on some of the information. Uh, Bullet, Hardin, LaRue, Mead, and Nelson. So we have several counties so down in the south. that whole line there that they're warning on. Yeah, 60 mile hour wind gusts with this, or it's moving. Um, east at 55, it has 60 mile an hour wind gusts with it. So uh, countless uh, cities like Bardstown, E-Town um, are all going to be noticing this uh, severe thunderstorm warning. So again, let me get a, a better idea of where it is tracking is moving to the east around 55 miles an hour, uh, marching right over Fort Knox, Lebanon Junction towards E-Town and Bardstown Bend. So uh, this is one of those deals where, you know, it's not a tornado worn storm, but you got to be treating it pretty seriously. Um, you just never know what these thunderstorms are going to be blowing kind of objects at your at your house. So make sure you get away from windows and just kind of ride this out and uh, wait it out. Uh, these storms are luckily moving pretty quick. So all you have to do is just, you know, simmer down, wait inside for a little bit, and they're going to be right over your home pretty quickly. And Sam, as you mentioned, uh, there is still a chance that you can have little spin ups here. We, we noticed that this was a severe thunderstorm warning and then uh, we, we popped down a tornado warning in the middle of it. So there is a chance within this big area of a severe thunderstorm warning, there could be some circulations that develop and we might end up with um, a spot tornado warning here or there uh, just to give you a quick heads up. Um, still looks like there is possibly some rotation here just off to the southwest of Fort Knox. Just be still seeking shelter if you're in that tornado warned area. The good news here if you're around the Irvington area in Breckenridge County or anywhere in Breckenridge County, severe weather threat has come to an end for your area and will be in a few minutes over with in the Mead County area too. So uh, we are going to show you the areas that uh, no longer are in that severe weather threat. Let's go ahead and back up the view. We still have a tornado watch for much of the area, but if you're west of 65 and really anywhere in southern Indiana, the severe weather threat is over with. Uh, even though, again, we still have that tornado watch till noon for these counties along I-64 and along the Ohio River in Indiana, it does look as as we go back to reflectivity that that severe weather threat is over with. Yeah, let we me also have the severe weather threat in these areas in uh, Perry County, Meade County, Breckenridge County. Pretty soon, you're going to be out of that severe weather threat. Uh, so this tornado warning does go until 845. However, it looks like the worst part of it is just on that far southeastern side of the tornado warning until 845 Eastern time heading towards the Radcliffe area. Uh, just be in your place of shelter here in Radcliffe, Fort Knox. Got a big concentration of lightning strikes here. 
since we're close to the radar site, let's go back to uh, base reflectivity and we can, we can maybe go to storm relative as well. Uh, but we'll start with base, uh, I meant base velocity. Oh yeah, base velocity, yeah. Um, and just looking and see if we still have any oh, of these wow. little spots of rotation. That's a good signature right there. Um, kind of, um, gosh, I mean, just to the right. south of Irvington. Um, I, I guess this is another little spot right here, Ben, right where the, the reds meet the green there. Yep, and, and every time we get an update, they can they just kind of kind of ride along that green red line right there. And um, so there can be just little spin ups. You just never know. So if you're under a warning, just seek shelter until it's over with. As we've seen with much of Breckenridge County, with uh, other parts of Meade County, this is not going to last long. Just a, uh, hopefully just a minor inconvenience in your day to be seeking shelter in the lowest portion of your home, away from the doors and the windows. Want to be seeking shelter now there if you're still in parts of uh, Meade County along and south of uh, Highway 60 right here. Um, and then if you're near Vine Grove, Radcliffe, maybe even Rineville, be seeking shelter as well as we do have a very large, severe thunderstorm warned area. Let's go ahead and expand back our view and go back into uh, reflectivity. This is, a, a, again, a very large, severe thunderstorm warning uh, that covers Bardstown, Cox's Creek. Uh, here is the Bluegrass Parkway from Elizabethtown to Bardstown. All communities along there are going to be under that severe thunderstorm warning. Um, does that have the tornado possible tag on it? I'm assuming it does. Yeah, let me, uh, yeah, it looks like we did get a message from the National Weather Service saying the possible downstream of uh, current tornado um, with a tag there, severe thunderstorm warning with a tornado tag. So um, we are still watching that as a possibility. All right. Uh, so, okay, so as we look at the overall view here of the reflectivity, let's go, uh, I think this is SDF radar. Let's go to LBX radar. Sure. Um, that's going to show us the, the big broad view and uh, we kind of clean it up here. Just kind of look at the overall view. So it looks like southern Indiana, by the way, um, severe weather threat is over with this morning right now. Again, later today, there's a chance for some more rounds of severe weather. So don't um, don't give up your guard. Stay alert. Uh, pay attention to the weather conditions later this afternoon, too. Um, but notice here we're starting to see that worst part of it moving into eastern uh, Metro Louisville. There, uh, by the way, there's not a warning in Louisville right now. We are getting some spotty power outages from the heavy rain, not, not the heavy rainfall, but the, the frequent lightning strikes and possibly some pockets of isolated damaging wind gusts. Uh, but looking a lot better downtown, around the Highlands, Shively, down to Valley Station, around the airport, UofL. Uh, things are settling down now uh, with things clearing out to the west with just some leftover light rainfall. But the rain coming down very heavy. Uh, cats and dogs here is, is coming down along Interstate 64 by 265 in Fisherville, southeastern sections of Metro Louisville, down to Mount Washington. Very heavy rainfall, lightning and thunder, uh, lots and lots of heavy rainfall coming down in buckets over uh, Bullock County. Looking a lot better again for areas west of the Ohio River. Um, we did have the tornado warning a little bit earlier there in Harrison County and around Cordon. Long gone now, so we're in the clear there. And um, Sam, let's go ahead and back up uh, the view uh, so we can see more and more of the area. And, and again, pointing out that the severe weather threat is gone for Indiana for this portion of the day. Again, heads up later today, still have a chance for some severe weather, especially 3 until 8 p.m. Uh, so starting to see the strong thunderstorms along and east of I-71 and still out to the west of 65 here, moving into northern Hardin County near the Fort Knox areas where we have uh, still a little while longer this tornado warned area until 845. So about nine more minutes on that. And then we've got this very large severe thunderstorm warning that includes uh, Elizabethtown over to Bardstown, Cox's Creek. So much uh, the northeastern sections of Hardin County, Southern Bullet, Lebanon Junction, and then uh, Bardstown off to the south and the farther, far t northern tip of LaRue County off to the north of Hodgenville. And that goes until 915 this morning. Uh, so almost a half hour longer, uh, about a half hour longer with that uh, severe thunderstorm warned area here. Hey, Ben, I want to mention uh, two quick things as well. Um, Breckenridge County, all of you that do reside in Breckenridge County, you're actually out of the tornado warning and out of the severe thunderstorm warning. So that's some good news. Now, you're actually on your screen right now. That's actually a look at LGE's website. They're now saying up to 1,200 people, if not a little bit more than that, are now without power um, in Metro Louisville. Yeah, so the number is increasing. Uh, I'd say about 10 minutes ago, we mentioned there's about 800. So now up to 1,200 without uh, power. But uh, crews are going to be out busy today 
and uh, thinking about them and hopefully they stay safe out there with uh, the hazardous working conditions with the breezy weather that we're going to have even outside of thunderstorms. Some of the wind gusts are going to be over 30 miles per hour today. Um, so still watching out for some threats as far as damaging winds, frequent lightning, maybe some small hail here um, and can't rule out a brief spin up tornado as well um, in this zone right there. This orange area. Uh, we've got the radar on top of the warnings, but uh, this is uh, from Fort Knox, Radcliffe, just north of Elizabethtown, Lebanon Junction, and Bardstown, and off to the south towards Hodgenville is where we have this uh, severe thunderstorm warning. Uh, this severe thunderstorm warning has really been trimmed up to really only include the East View area in down the Western Kentucky Parkway in the western sections of Hardin County. So that is going to be wrapped up here very soon. Um, but so the worst part of this is still this area right here. And Sam, if you zoom in, we're still seeing some curvatures here. There's still the potential that we could have little spin up tornadoes. Um, and that would be near Vine Grove, Radcliffe, and, and into the Fort Knox area. Uh, so please still just be seeking shelter until this quickly moves over your area and that uh, you'll be out of that threat of severe weather. It looks like Meade County, by the way, uh, no longer a threat of severe weather as the worst of it starting to move from the Meade County line over into Hardin County line. Uh, so Vine Grove, just in case, stay in your place of shelter, Radcliffe. I advise you the same thing too uh, until we can get that green red connection that little line right there that jagged line east of you and then that uh, little spin up tornado threat will be uh, long gone for a little while here. Uh, so this is what we're watching uh, right now here at 839 on your Tuesday morning and let's go ahead back up the view and then we'll switch back into a future cast and uh, look ahead at the rest of today. So we've got other concerns for what is going to be just a very busy April 2nd Tuesday for us as uh, this is just the, the first round of our severe weather potential for today and also some flash flood potential for us too. Should we talk about future cast here, Ben? Yep. Let's go ahead and uh, load it up and we'll, we'll see how we're looking. So uh, right now we've got the rain lined up uh, over the top of Louisville, so we need to move ahead a little bit. Uh, so it looks like Futurecast might be just a little bit behind, but it does have some redevelopment. Notice a late morning, early afternoon, around lunchtime, um, and this is going to be some heavy rain, maybe some isolated damaging winds, uh, but definitely not the main event. What we're going to be waiting on and being uh, paying close, close attention to our entire first alert storm team is the energy that's coming with the heart of the storm system as the cold front moves closer to the region, jet stream energies there, unstable air. We do not want to break out in the sunshine. If we get into mid to upper 70s, that's going to be a problem today as it's going to be feeding these thunderstorms. Let's go three, four, five o'clock and you can start to see them uh, increasing in intensity and possibly some rotating updrafts, rotating supercells here is what we're going to be needing to watch out for. So this morning we're talking about weak spin up tornadoes. These could be living a little longer and possibly be stronger, perhaps EF1, EF2 strength tornadoes later today if they do occur. Big, big heads up here, 3 p.m. until 8 p.m. is when we have that highest threat of tornadoes. Now, as we go to 6, 7 o'clock, we're seeing that threat moving east of I-65, away from areas west of I-65. And then as we go 7, 8 o'clock towards sunset, that threat of severe weather diminishing and moving out to the east. And we can all kind of relax by that point. And what's up next is just some cold, wet, windy conditions for the next couple of days. Uh, in fact, we might even sneak in some snowflakes for tomorrow night. So very, very wild, crazy start uh, to our early April here and through the rest of this work week. Uh, but just need to get through this afternoon and early evening time. And then that severe weather threat is over with. And we don't see any more threats of severe storms uh, throughout the remainder of the extended forecast over the next seven days. So a simple, eye, simple view of where we still have the threat of severe weather is uh, this severe thunderstorm warning um, that goes until 915 this morning. Uh, that includes Fort Knox, Radcliffe, very near the northern edge of Elizabethtown, up I-65 to Lebanon Junction. East down the Bluegrass Parkway towards Bardstown, including and that is uh, included in that is Cox's Creek. Um, so this little severe thunderstorm warning around the Eastview area until 8:45. So that's going to be 
um, expired here in just a moment. This is the newest severe thunderstorm warning that we have in the viewing area uh, from Radcliffe all the way over to Bardstown. Very large severe thunderstorm warning that we have in place. And Ben, I'm not seeing a tornado. Oh, there's a new warning new that just popped warning. up here. New tornado warning uh, just east of Bardstown. Yeah, let's um, check out reflectivity and uh, see what's happening with that. Yeah, it looks like this is um, right over the Marion County area, um, Washington, or just north of Washington County, right over uh, Nelson County and extreme southern Spencer County. Uh, let me get in the information on this. So again, this warning actually uh, does go until about um, 9 a.m. this morning. Um, it's not a confirmed tornado on the ground, but of course, a tornado could be ongoing um, and not spotted right now, but radar indicated rotation within this thunderstorm. So it's just to the north uh, of Bardstown right now, but the track of this is probably going to be bringing it right over Bardstown, if not just clipping the northern fringe of uh, Bardstown in extreme northern Nelson County. Ben, what do you think? Uh, yep, northern Nelson County into Washington County, so into the Willisburg area, Springfield, Kentucky, uh, areas off to the northwest, around the Bluegrass Parkway, all be seeking shelter now. Get to your safe place. Uh, so that's from Bardstown east to the Willisburg area. Again, Washington County, Kentucky. This is just shows you how rapid these storms are moving. And again, this won't be a long inconvenience for you. Please just play it safe. Get to your place of shelter. Away from the doors and the windows. Um, in the safest place of your home, lowest place in your basement, preferably. Um, so this is uh, the latest tornado warning until 9 o'clock this morning. It's for this area right here that they have uh, projected to move off to the east and to the southeast. Um, so it might go ahead and pop on the reflectivity, and then we'll go ahead and do a track here in just a moment. Just want to inspect this. So, yeah, we've got a bright spot here. If you could go and take the warning off and just Click on those two pixels right there. I'm guessing we're getting over 50, 60 mile per hour. So 60 mile per hour winds and also the potential of some rotation. And go even tighter and let's get on some roads right out ahead of it because the scan. So here's Cox's Creek. Uh, here's Highway 150. Uh, so Bardstown Road down to Bardstown through northern Nelson County is, uh, is where we have the potential of a tornado. This is very near Lenore down Kentucky 523. So between 523 and Highway 150 is where we have the potential of either damaging wind gusts or possibly a spin up tornado. Uh, so that's going to be crossing over 150 here basically now. Um, and continuing off to the east, possibly a little bit of a southeast direction uh, that would take it to 509. So that in, the, in those latest scans that is just kind of pulsed up. And that's why we have this fresh new tornado warning that goes until nine o'clock for about 15 more minutes. This is not a long lasting tornado warning because the, the spin ups are just not lasting very long. There, there's they're pulsing up and pulsing down. Um, so as we expand out a little bit more here, Sam, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take that off to the easterly direction and then probably another one down here. I'm starting to see some more rotation uh, right. down there. So should I track this a little? Yeah, let's uh, put a quick track on this tornado warning that's active and just the, right over Cox's Creek right now. So uh, this storm's kind of marching south and east, which is interesting because the theme yeah. with all these storms has been more of an easterly track. But uh, yeah, this one brings right over Samuels at 840 right now. Um, East Bardstown right around 850. So if you live on all these communities, you're in that warning. You need to get to the lowest level of your home, preferably the basement and um, just seek shelter. Get away from windows and uh, grab some blankets, anything to protect you. Uh, maybe a bike helmet, um, anything that you need to wear to um, just protect yourself in the event that uh, things get uh, really serious. Now, I also want to bring it towards another tornado warning that was actually just issued. There's a new one uh, right over LaRue County in Hardin County. Uh, this tornado warning actually goes until 915 this morning, so it does stretch into the next half an hour. Um, the Storms moving southeast as well, right over E Town, Radcliffe as well. Um, this tornado warning, uh, let me get the velocity on it for you so you get an idea of where the rotation is ongoing. So it looks like, uh, yeah, right over Ronnieville right now to the northwest of E Town, that's where this, that significant little uh, rotation is underway right now. We also do have um, another very uh, potent yeah. line of very strong wind. That might be straight line wind that direction, Ben. Straight line wind, but this is kind of like a mini bow echo. So you got straight line wind here, but then when it comes back into this book end vortice right there is where we could have a little spin up tornado. Either way, both could be doing like EF zero damage uh, winds around 70, 80 miles per hour. Uh, so we're, we're getting some areas that are pulsing up a little bit more. We've been tracking this as it's been moving out of Meade County around Radcliffe, Vine Grove over the last 
half hour or so. Um, so now, Rhineyville, you need to be seeking shelter right now. Uh, might as well be seeking shelter around the Elizabethtown area. It's very close to you guys. Just play it safe. And then up I-65 as you head towards uh, Lebanon Junction, where we have the TriMark camera up right here behind me. Uh, that is where it's about to cross over. Uh, so southern portions of Bullitt County, northern Hardin County is where we have the potential of some spin-up tornadoes. Let's look, let's look at the warnings again just to kind of get a better view uh, of the area, just in case you're not, not aware. This one is until 9 o'clock. That, that is very near Bardstown, goes towards the Willsburg area in, in Washington County and just north of Springfield. In between that tornado warning and this tornado warning, we've got a severe thunderstorm warning. And anywhere in this severe, th we talked about this earlier, within the, tornado, the severe thunderstorm warning, we'll likely have some spots that break out into tornado warnings because we're just getting these little spin up tornadoes. And this one goes until 915. So that does include Elizabethtown, very near Hodgenville. We're starting to get a more of a southeastern component to the motion of these possible tornado touchdowns. Uh, these are radar indicated and, and they're very quick little spin ups and they can go away just as fast as they came up. Uh, so that's why these tornado warnings aren't going to be lasting too long. They're just kind of popping up and then expiring. Um, so near Radcliffe, down to Elizabethtown, down the Bluegrass Parkway to Bardstown, and then over towards the Willisburg area, Springfield area, all be seeking shelter at this time. Again, this is not going to take long. Over the next 10 or 15 minutes, we'll likely be able to tell you it's all clear and you're all fine. Just like we did in Breckenridge County, Meade County, Harrison County, uh, in the western sections of Hardin County, all clear as far as severe weather out this direction from Corden, Brandenburg to Irvington and Hardinsburg, severe weather threat over with there. New severe thunderstorm warning on the northern edge of this tornado warning, and this will likely go until 915 or so. Yeah, it looks like yeah, 915. 915. Yeah, and uh, this one now, let me get some quick details for you on this one here too, Ben. Moving southeast at 45, um, it is... Um, Actually, yeah, moving northeast, southeast at 45. So again, it's producing a possible tornado, but mainly some wind up to about 60 to at times 70 miles an hour and sometimes a penny sized hail. So um, these storms are there. Here's the thing too, Ben, I wanted to bring up earlier. They're now kind of stalling out a little bit. They're, they're lessening their speed. Earlier on, they were quick movers, 50 to 60 miles an hour. Now the storm motion's down to about 40 to 45. So they're kind of taking their time a little bit as they can make their way down towards the parkways here uh, early to close to mid-morning. Yeah, and they're encountering a different environment. Sometimes you, you encounter different wind speeds throughout the depth of the atmosphere. Uh, so the jet stream winds perhaps aloft, not quite as strong, but we are still getting some of the, those areas of rotation. As we zoom back in, we'll just go from north to south, and we can just do some tracks here. Um, but it looks like east of Taylorsville, and Taylorsville Lake is where it's the worst, uh, northeastern Nelson County. And then that's going away from our viewing area into the Lexington market once you get towards Lawrenceburg. Um, so, so let's go ahead and do some various tracks. We'll do one here for the severe thunderstorm warning. We'll do one for that tornado warning. And then we'll go off to the southwest and just give everybody a heads up that is uh, under the threat of either damaging winds frequent lightning, possibly some localized flooding, and maybe a quick spin up tornado as well. So if you are in the Ashbrook area, be seeking shelter now, or any small community surrounding these towns, uh, be getting into your uh, safe place and away from the doors and the windows and lowest level of your home. And to Ballard, as we approach nine o'clock this morning, Salvisa, uh, Salvisa at 9.05, into the Braxton area at about 9.10, into Wilmore at 9.15. All right, moving on down the line as we get near Bardstown, uh, there's the potential of uh, some rotation here and again, again maybe a brief spin up tornado in parts of Nelson County just off to the east of Cox's Creek. So that's going to put you towards Bardstown here uh, in just a couple minutes into Maud at nine o'clock into the Botland area at 901, Willisburg at 905, let's see at 910, Pleasant Grove 911 and then Springfield at about 915. So that's putting you into the Washington County, Kentucky areas as you move off to the south of the Bluegrass Parkway. Another area where we see rotation is here just to the south of Lebanon Junction. A pretty good notch right there. Um, so we're gonna continue to track that off to the southeast about 45. Uh, so heading into Colesburg now, Elizabethtown in just a couple minutes, at about five minutes. Gaither's at about nine o'clock. Lyons, 9.05 to 9.10. And the New Haven at about 9.10. Hodgenville at 9.15. 
Abraham Lincoln Elementary School at about 915 and the Howardstown also as we approach 915. So that is in portions of Nelson and Hardin County. That uh, live cam behind me here, that is at uh, Lebanon Junction, uh, where we have the heavy rain, the lots of lightning and thunder. Going to get some power outages just from the cloud to ground lightning strikes and the frequency of the lightning strikes that we have and, and watching out for ponding of water on the roadways. So the threat for Louisville is over with for it looks like this morning. We're going to have to watch out again this afternoon. So the heavy rain, the lightning and thunder is gone. So we've got it all clear for now to get back out and about if you're in the Louisville metro area. Southern Indiana is fine as well. Areas of I-71, we're no longer seeing a threat of severe weather. And as we look west of I-65, uh, things are looking a lot better too. Uh, so now our concern is basically along the parkways, or the Bluegrass Parkway, I should say, near Taylorsville Lake and east of I-65 uh, from Elizabethtown to near Hodgenville, down the Bluegrass Parkway to Bardstown and Springfield. If you live in this general area, basically on either side of the Bluegrass Parkway, that's where we have still the potential of some damaging winds and also some spin up brief tornadoes and, and look at the just clusters of lightning strikes that are coming down in these areas. So lots of lightning coming down around Shepherdsville, Mount Washington, Taylorsville, Lebanon Junction. Um, and into Bardstown. Let's go back to the velocity mode and take a look at if we see any bright spots, if we see any areas of rotation, uh, we can give some areas a heads up. So it looks like we've got one here. Um, so that is right on the eastern Nelson and Washington County line near Sparrow. Some big time wind right there, Ben. That's, oh, let me, um, hold on one sec. Let me get yeah, rid no of problem. this. So um, this is going to be some pretty significant wind I would I would imagine I mean um, 70 miles an hour is what's estimating so so that's either like damaging straight line wind or maybe a little spin up tornado this is uh, east of Bloomfield Highway 62 between there and Kentucky 555 uh, moving east to the east and southeast at about 45 miles per hour. So if you live between the Ashbrook and the Pullum area, uh, that is where that is heading over the Bluegrass Parkway here in just a moment. If you want to go in tight, see if we can get some neighborhood roads off the Bluegrass Parkway, uh, feel free to do that. Might have to get your street spotter tool out there to check out some of those uh, routes as we zoom in. Um, so that's the Martha Lane Collins Bluegrass Parkway. We have uh, Highway 62 here, um, Highway 555. So um, this is right along um, the river valley there. So again, this this is where the wind's going to be really strong in extreme eastern Kentucky and here pretty soon. And Sam, if you go extremely even tighter, that's what typically when we start to get some of the uh, the neighborhood roads to pop hey, in there. Ben, there you go. <coughs> ben, we have a new tornado warning uh -huh. uh, that does include Nelson County. It also includes counties outside of our viewing area, but that uh, is a tornado warning that goes until 930, I'm 930 what I'm seeing Harrodsburg um, it's going to be over that area so and you're listening to storm team meteorologist Alden German, German who's joining us and will be th with us throughout this afternoon as our severe weather potential will continue for today so this is an area where there's potentially over 70 mile per hour winds uh, this is northern northeastern Nelson County um, so as you can see, you read that with me there that's uh, the Prather Ridge Road Love Ridge Road uh, let's go ahead and back up our view um, and so that is coming up to near the uh, Bluegrass Parkway and, and very soon that's going to pull out of our viewing area into the Lexington Market. Um, so let's go ahead and go back in to some other areas where we have that new tornado warning. So yeah, there's the new tornado warning that uh, is just north of Bardstown between Bardstown and Bloomfield and then areas off to the southeast. That's the older actual tornado warning. So the new one oh, is expanded. Oh, here it is expanded out as as all mentioned out of our viewing area so um, that's going to include the rest of Nelson County and far northeastern tip there of Washington County so they're getting on the fringe of our viewing area just off to the north of Willisburg east of Bloomfield it looks like we've got some rotation right there uh, right along and north of the Bluegrass Parkway. So basically what we were just talking about is, is that new tornado warning. Um, so right over uh, Kentucky 555, that's going to cruise over the Bluegrass Parkway. So if you're familiar with these areas just north of Willisburg, please be seeking shelter at this time. So uh, that is uh, just between Willisburg and Bloomfield, uh, east down the Bluegrass Parkway, east of Bloomfield there in that uh, little tip of Nelson County there by uh, where 555 
um, and 62 come together uh, right there uh, near the Bluegrass Parkway, as we mentioned. So new tornado warning there that uh, won't last too long. That next scan, I, I'm, I'm guessing we'll put that, if it's still there, should put it a little bit, right, maybe right on top of the Bluegrass Parkway, in fact. Um, let's go back to reflectivity and see if we see any uh, kind of ro 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 rotation here with the latest view. Um, so yeah, anywhere in this disorganized cluster, brief spin up tornado possible or uh, some damage to straight line winds. Seeing this jutting out right here, it looks like we're getting uh, the jet to kind of push out on the raindrops over the Bluegrass Parkway. So that's where there's potential damaging straight line winds and maybe a little spin up tornado too, just off to the north of Willisburg. Um, and so that's right where 555 comes into uh, the Bluegrass Parkway and also 53. There you can see Highway 62 just off to the north of the Bluegrass Parkway. Anywhere in there is uh, where you need to be seeking shelter at this time. Um, and then let's go real close right basically here. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, so we got Seville and Sharpsville and Tableau and Tatham Springs is where we have the potential of a little sp uh, spin up tornado be seeking shelter at this time right at uh, 53. And uh, what is that, 116? Yeah, it looks like 53 and uh, Highway 1160. We have Highway uh, 390 there. Um, I guess a few more residential streets here. Um, uh, Felicia Lane, Sharpsville Lane, um, right along Highway 53. So there you go. Please be seeking shelter if you're in that new tornado warned area that goes until 930. And a lot of that's going to be out of our viewing area in the next five minutes or so because we're on the very northeastern edge of Washington County, Kentucky, uh, north of the Willisburg area, if you're familiar with that, uh, basically just along and south of the Bluegrass Parkway is where we have the potential of some damaging wind gusts from this uh, strong thunderstorm um, that you see there bumping right up and along uh, the Bluegrass Parkway. And look at that, it's, it's kind of even the shape of the Bluegrass Parkway right there. We've got two, two tornado warnings here, one till 915, one until 930. Uh, so the potential of some spin up activity here. Lots of uh, heavy rainfall, frequent cloud to ground lightning, maybe some localized flooding to deal with as well as this moves on through your area. But like a lot of the other areas, we're definitely going to focus on you, but this will clear out. It may only take 10 or 15 minutes, so just take that time to be safe, play it safe, get to your place of shelter and uh, be super safe. Hey Ben, I, uh, if you don't mind, I wanted to take sure. a moment to talk about power outages uh, really quickly. We don't have too many, thankfully. We do have about 3,000 across the metro area, and you can see there on the lg &E map uh, to your left, they're largely confined to the Hillview area at the moment, but across the rest of the region, we don't have too many, uh, only about 100 in Bullock County, uh, down towards Nelson County. They don't have any power outages and no power outages in Hardin County either, so thankfully we haven't seen two extreme wind speeds that are resulting in too many problems uh, like that. However, uh, we could have some minor areas of flooding, so just something to keep in mind as well. You know, try not to drive through any of those possibly flooded roadways. And if you have any storm pictures, we would also like to see those. You can text those to us at 502-582-7290, or you can also email them to them, post them on Facebook, and tag us. What was your total power, power outages again? Around the metro area, about 3,000. Uh, excuse me, about uh, 2,300. 2,300. If, if you see the number for, for all of the lg &E, let me know too. I was just kind of curious around other spots around Kentucky. Uh, so we're, as expected, we, we get a little delay as it moves through. So that number has gone up quite a bit over metro Louisville uh, with those power outages there. Uh, some. Damaging winds certainly could cause some of those power outages, knocking down some tree limbs, some power lines, but also just the amount of lightning strikes, hundreds of lightning strikes coming down. Let's go ahead and go to, back to the broad view here of the entire viewing area um, and just to kind of get our bearings again. We've got a couple of tornado warnings with maybe a brief spin up tornado possible or some straight line damaging winds along the Bluegrass Parkway, uh, basically E-Town East through near Bardstown to near Willisburg, just north of Willisburg. Uh, no problem anymore. We're in the clear now as far as severe weather in Louisville up I-71, southern Indiana, west of I-65 in Kentucky. For now, we do have another severe weather threat coming our way later on today. As we've been predicting over the last couple of days, a couple rounds are going to be possible in the morning and then again in the afternoon. Time will tell if we get any 
significant damage from these tornado warnings. The reports always come in a little bit later. If you want to put on the local storm reports and see if we have anything yeah. uh, out just yet. With I, the, I, meant to, I meant to mention earlier, we did a good report of a 42 mile hour wind gust at Fort Knox Airport. Um, just some reports of hail and some, some wind there, but uh, we're not seeing anything too significant, Ben. It looks like a pretty clean map for now, but that might be changing. Yeah, always kind of like an hour delay. So the, these weren't on the map a little bit earlier, but this is an indication of the same system that we're dealing with now. Uh, if you want to just query some of that semi, two semis blown off the road at the intersection of uh, Interstate 69, Interstate 64 uh, near Evansville, some utility poles down. So it looks like various tree power line damage and again, semis blown off the interstate there near Evansville, 70 mile per hour wind gusts. And, and we we're also showing you those pixels on the radar that we've had here locally, just off to the southeast of Louisville, the potential of some 70 mile per hour wind gusts, and that's showing you what that can do. So this is kind of a history of the damage of, of these storms. Uh, 10 roof ripped off a barn, numerous trees down the roads, Power poles down. Um, this report uh, into the emergency management there. Mobile home destroyed by a tree. Um, so this was the damage in Evansville. Same storm system, by the way, that had tornado warnings that moved through southern Indiana and through Meade County and Breckenridge. So we might have some delayed reports here on these with these counties north and south of the Ohio River. Same system we're tracking now off to the southeast of Louisville. So just an indication of the power and how potent these uh, thunderstorms are as they've been moving through. Uh, and, and this is the, kind of the price we pay with temperatures this much above normal for this time of the year. We've got a new severe thunderstorm warning, it looks like here. Oh, new warning. Yeah, let me get the information on that as well. Um, that one just coming in, it looks like it's going to be actually expiring around um, Let's see around uh, 9, 9. Yeah, 930. Um, it looks like that's near the tornado warning here in Washington County. Yes, that's actually let's see. Well, the Nelson one was canceled that and um, this one um, issued at 904. This one goes for Mercer, Anderson County, Washington and Woodford counties. Yeah, it's moving southeast at 55. So it's a quick mover, Ben. Yeah, so that one's just off to the east of Barstown here. That that includes more of Washington County, just off to the north of Springfield. So we have that uh, little tornado warning embedded in this bigger severe thunderstorm warning that's just been uh, released, uh, just been issued here. So Barstown's still in the severe thunderstorm warning. And also notice we got some heavy rain, lots of lightning and thunder coming down through Nelson County. Nelson County, you guys still want to be seeking shelter until this moves through and out of your area. Not as concerned with this tornado warning that that one goes until 915, correct? Yes. But it looks like the rotation from that one is moved down the Bluegrass Parkway. Uh, so I'm not there, nearly as concerned, concerned with Elizabethtown anymore. They're actually canceling that, Ben. So that's okay. some good news uh, for, for Nelson County. So the only active tornado warning that we still have off in Kentuckiana is way off to the east here, um, just north of Willisburg. And, and, and that is going to be moving out of our viewing area. So that area of rotation is right on that Washington County line. Um, and so Willisburg, just to play it safe, stay in your uh, place of shelter. Uh, still the potential of some circulation right here, maybe a brief spin up tornado uh, near the Dugansville area, Cardwell and Battle. Uh, so right near Kentucky 53, 390, 1160 is uh, where we still have the potential of some uh, damaging. So that's that's how much longer you probably need to be seeking shelter as it's uh, going to be moving off quickly off to the east into the southeast. Still seeing those bright spots, which indicates some wind speeds possibly in excess of 70 miles per hour. So um, we are picking up on some of the potential damaging wind gusts just to the east of Willisburg between Mackville and Willisburg and then also um, just outside of our viewing area right there. So that's around 70 mile per hour wind off to the northeast of Willisburg. Uh, so that can either be damaging straight line winds or maybe some brief spin up tornado activity as well. So that's why we have that broad severe thunderstorm warning there in far northeastern uh, Washington County. So uh, just to the east of Willisburg is where we have a spot of potential damaging winds. Pretty impressive there. 76 mile per hour wind gusts reported uh, with these pixels right here. 
uh, indicated by the radar. So that is very close to the, the damage caused by the wind gusts that we saw in Evansville that we we're showing you with those storm reports here uh, just a short time ago. And, and Ben, as yeah. you mentioned that, we actually did just get a report in our, um, in our chat here for the 44 mile hour wind gusts in eastern Anderson County. I know that's out of Kentuckiana, but um, that just shows you that uh, they're already dealing with some pretty strong wind up to about 40 miles an hour in some spots. All right, let's go ahead and uh, broaden the view out a little bit uh, just so we can see more of uh, areas being impacted by these strong thunderstorms. Um, so this hasn't popped off the map yet, but uh, Elizabethtown, you're going to be in the clear as far as any uh, tornadic activity or damaging winds um, as that is going to be uh, canceled here pretty soon. Um, still looking at some concerns here around Bardstown, down the Bluegrass Parkway, uh, down to, to near the Willisburg area. Uh, is where we still have some, obviously some strong thunderstorms, lots of lightning, torrential, blinding rainfall, and notice this kind of little wavy action right here. There, there can just be little spin ups uh, along that uh, near the Willisburg area and uh, just off to the north of Springfield uh, down Highway 150 that uh, cuts off uh, the Bluegrass Parkway here over parts of Washington and Nelson County. This is where we have uh, the biggest threat of possibly some pockets of damaging winds, maybe some power outages by the frequent lightning strikes as well. Um, so this is the really the only place where we still have uh, a small area of a tornado warning that really it, that portion of the tornado warning is now outside of our viewing area, that curvature right there. Uh, so that's heading towards the Harrisburg area. Um, so that is out of our viewing area, uh, moving, and that's probably already out of our viewing area as well. Uh, so we'll continue to watch these areas under that severe thunderstorm warning in Nelson County, Bardstown, just to play it safe, stay inside, stay in your place of shelter. Almost all other areas for now are in the clear as far as severe weather. Everything west of I-65 in Kentucky, everything in southern Indiana and up I-71, we're in good shape. Um, got a live view of downtown starting to clear out there on the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Uh, so the heavy rain is gone in Louisville. So for many of us, we're going to be able to get out and about, maybe run some errands through lunchtime before we start to set up the stage for another round of some severe weather heading our way uh, later on this afternoon. Just have some light rain and some drizzle left over in Louisville right now. There you can see some of that clearing as we look from on top of the Galt House over uh, the Lock and Dam and uh, seeing uh, the, the leaves grow bigger and bigger on those trees and this rain certainly going to help after what has been a pretty dry springtime. Uh, so kind of beneficial to get the rainfall, but at the same time, we're trying our best to dodge uh, those damaging winds. Yeah, the uh, wind's kind of dying too, which is good news there and that you can see with the flag. Now what we don't want is sunshine at any point for the rest of today because it's already it's been already been off to a warm start. We're in the 60s. If we break out into a period of sunshine, if we warm up into the mid and upper 70s, that's going to be a recipe for some damaging storms. So back to that, we're going to look ahead with future cast before we wrap things up and get back to that severe thunderstorm morning off to the southeast. Um, so looking at the potential as we head towards lunchtime for some redevelopment of some heavy downpours and maybe some gusty winds, this ne not necessarily is going to be damaging winds or severe weather. This midday stuff right here. Hopefully this brings a lot of clouds, can mix up the atmosphere, and then this afternoon won't be so bad. That's one scenario. If this doesn't occur necessarily as much as we see and we get more sunshine this afternoon and we warm up, scenario two is worse and that means a higher tornado threat from around 3 p.m. until 8 p.m. out ahead of a cold front that's going to be crashing into the area tied to jet stream winds and a lot of unstable air. Again, a lot of ingredients for severe weather later on today. So let's push this forward as we head towards about 3, 4 o'clock. We're going to see some redevelopment here. Um, and and so there we go. Here's four o'clock. We'll go five, six. And so this is this is the stuff that we don't want redeveloping with those 70s later on today because uh, there is turning in the winds at the surface. There's strong winds aloft. Again, just a lot of severe weather ingredients. Uh, that's kind of textbook here for rotating supercells. Um, so we're going to be watching this late afternoon, early evening. Round two could be worse. We're just going to watch it very closely. It looks like by around 8 o'clock as we approach sunset, the severe weather threat 
will be rapidly diminishing across the area. So it's really that time frame from around 3 until 8 p.m. that we're going to be watching very closely for you. The entire storm team will be here. Storm team meteorologist Alden German is joining us now with Sam Gabrielli. Colleen Peterson will be here with Christina San Juan as well. Uh, so things will settle down a little bit later on this evening. And uh, if, if we want to get back, uh, Sam, and discuss the Storm Prediction Center. The Storm Prediction Center has put out what is called a moderate risk of severe storms. The Storm Prediction Center, by the way, is a division of the National Weather Service out of Norman, Oklahoma, and their job is to look across the United States to see where severe weather might happen. And this doesn't happen very often. The National Weather Service told me this morning that in this red area right here, covering much of the viewing area, we haven't had that much of a moderate risk, level four out of five of the severe weather risk categories in over six years, since July of 2018. Uh, so it's been a long time since we've had this level of a severe weather threat. Just advising you to be prepared for later on today to seek shelter if a warning is issued immediately because there is that risk later today that we could redevelop the potential of tornadoes, large hail, damaging wind, flash flooding, and frequent lightning. In fact, we could have more energy for stronger supercells later today, which would bring in that larger hail threat and maybe even more of a damaging wind threat. And if those storms are tracking over some of the same wet areas that we've now uh, just got a big dose of heavy rain this morning that could lead to some flash flooding and, and more of that frequent lightning, which could lead to some more power outages. So with that said, that's pretty much all of your severe weather threats that are in play once again later on today. So that's uh, the, the risk that's still out from the Storm Prediction Center for later on this afternoon. Stay alert, stay up to date on the changing weather. You can get our WHAS 11 app and it's got interactive radar on there. It's got all your alerts to stay up to date on what's going to be happening. And not just today, of course, you can use that anytime, uh, any time of the year and stay up to date. You can also send reports to 502-582-790 if you, when it's safe to do so. Obviously, when it's clearing out, when we say it's all clear, you can send your video or your pictures to 502-582-7290. We'll obviously show them here on WHS11, um, whs11.com on the app, and then also uh, we provide the National Weather Service with any of those reports that we do get. Uh, so the severe weather threat round one this morning still existing for some areas off to the southeast of Louisville around the Bluegrass Parkway. Still that severe thunderstorm warning for Nelson County. The rain is coming down very hard here in Bardstown, likely some gusty winds and seeing just nonstop lightning strikes here on either side of the Bluegrass Parkway between Bardstown and up towards Lawrenceburg and near the Willisburg area. I know you guys still have this tornado warning here in northeastern Willisburg, but it looks like that area of concern is off to the east and southeast of you guys. Um, and then this uh, tornado warning does not really even exist anymore. It is going to expire in one minute and pop off the map. So no longer a threat here, by the way, in Elizabethtown and the northern sections of LaRue County. So there it goes. Yep, there it that is, is disappeared. Gone. Yeah. So this is what we have left over here. One pocket, one cluster of very heavy rainfall. It is moving off to the east and southeast at around 45 miles per hour. It's not going to take long to get out of Willisburg, get out of Bloomfield, um, and stop putting down this very, very heavy rainfall. But it, as long as you hear that thunder, just stay indoors and wait it out until it moves on out of your area and things will be a whole lot better. Let's go to one more check before we start to wrap things up of the velocity and just make sure we're not seeing any little tight circulations, any possible uh, vorticity or, or, or any um, weak spin up tornadoes here in that area. And, and we're not seeing that right now. Um, if you want to just click off of the warnings here, Sam, and then just click on some of these pixels, just give us an idea of maybe some leftover wind speeds, maybe right here around the yeah, about 44 miles per hour. And those are the, those were the similar to the reports that you got earlier, right? Yeah, yeah, those were the, some of the storm damage reports I saw earlier. I have not seen any confirmed storm damage wind speeds or confirmed wind speeds over 50 miles an hour so far this morning. Of course, that could change once we get more data on all these thunderstorms, but for now, um, it, that does kind of parallel uh, some confirmed wind speeds we have seen earlier on. And, and Alden, let, let us know if you get some more power outages updates in Kentucky and in the metro area, and uh, we can get an update on that as well. And that's, I know it's been an impact not only from the damaging wind gusts, but also um, the frequent cloud to ground lightning strikes, possibly knocking out some transformers, um, some of the power poles there. No uh, updates on those power outages. Um, 
across the state of Kentucky, there are about 2,100. Most of those are off in the west, western half of the state, uh, Union County in particular. But uh, the most power outages I've seen really have been in Metro Louisville, where we have about 2,400 now. Okay. And of course, that doesn't include a lot of the, the co-ops that we have in some of the rural areas uh, where there could be some, uh, obviously, some more power outages as well. Um, so hopefully, you know, the crews are going to get as many of those power outages back up in shape and the power restored over the next several hours before that next round of potential severe weather later on this afternoon. So this is the uh, one storm that we have left over over Washington County. It's coming down very hard right over the top of Willisburg down the Bluegrass Parkway. Bloomfield still getting a lot of lightning strikes, but it doesn't look like we have any organized really strong damaging wind gusts within this uh, cluster of thunderstorms right now and this tornado warning is really impacting areas near the Harrodsburg area. If you know some folks near Harrodsburg, want to help make sure they get into their place of shelter. It could be a little brief spin up tornado or maybe some pockets of damaging winds in excess of 70 miles per hour. We did see some spikes in the velocity data there near Harrodsburg uh, down Highway 127 that uh, cuts off the Bluegrass Parkway. Uh, as we head back into the overall view here, um, let's go into a regional RADSAT or even just the, the regional radar and just see if there, we've got anything developing out to the west and uh, we'll, we'll put on the composite radar and see what we have. Uh, just some activity off to the southwest around Memphis. We'll have to wait and see. Again, as this might be some of the lunchtime activity uh, that, that starts to spread our way later. Uh, this certainly has worked over the atmosphere a bit to make things unstable for a little while. Unfortunately, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. We've got the rest of today to heat things up and maybe break out to some sunshine, uh, which could make things uh, ripe and give us the ingredients for the potential of a severe weather outbreak later on this afternoon over parts of the Ohio Valley. We're going to try our best to dodge those storms later on today, but the entire storm team is going to be here watching those storms very closely for you. Um, it is now 918, so just want to get directors and producers uh, ready to go if we don't rejoin. Uh, or join Great Day Live, uh, but it looks like we're clearing things out. Most areas are now in the clear from the morning round of severe storms as we have uh, one leftover severe thunderstorm warning off to the southeast, which will be quickly moving out of our viewing area. But we are going to pop on any time today. There are any alerts or any warnings. Uh, we, we will we'll get them to you immediately as quickly as we possibly can. Again, you can go to whs11.com for more information. If your power goes out, have those cell phones charged for later today. You can still use that WHS11 app to get those alerts and have that interactive radar and just have our live stream going as well. So there you can see a lot of the area now clearing out as the dangerous weather, the damaging storm starting to move off. Uh, to the east and off to the southeast of Metro Louisville. So thanks for watching here. Uh, we're going to do our best to keep you safe later on today. A severe weather again will be possible this afternoon from around 3 until 8 o'clock today.